the appointed hour is here, 7 o'clock. Um, we opened the, um, uh, the board at 7 o'clock on August 6th. Um, I need to announce to the public that there's going to be remote participation at the start of this meeting right now. Um, Ann Landry will be joining us from a remote location. Uh, I'm sure she's going to be a lot more comfortable there than here. Um, Ann, can you hear us okay? Yes, I can. Thank okay. you. Okay, and um, I do need to hear from you about um, who's present and able to hear the discussion. Do you have a statement to that effect? Yes, there is no one here present and able to hear the discussion other than myself, other than someone who is less than one month old. Got it. Um, and one thing I'll just mention is that uh, tonight all of our, all of our, um, any of our votes will have to be roll call naturally because um, Anne is going to be able to speak to us, but we won't be able to see her. So um, I think we get going right away uh, with liaison reports. Andy? Sure. Um, let me just find my notes here. A um, couple of things. First, pull this up. Um, I wanted to say that at our last meeting, uh, I argued that this board should um, stick with the appointment of a member of the ad hoc that was made about three months ago, um, who was a non-resident, um, and uh, to the ad hoc committee for the Human Rights Board. I stated that this board should make an exception to the charter in this case. Uh, this was, in, in, upon reflection, a mistake. Uh, while my intentions were good, uh, I recognize that the town charter is the basis for our representative democracy here in Reading, and that as a selectman, I am sworn to uphold the charter. Uh, with that in mind, I will no longer suggest that we make exceptions to the charter. Thank you. Um, in other news, are you looking for a job that has great benefits, including food and good cheer? helps democracy and that will earn you some cold, hard cash? If so, please apply to be an election worker for our March election. Simply head down to the clerk's office for more information about becoming one. Um, there are a few spots are still open. Um, you will have an exciting four-hour training period. Is that still correct, Laura? That is correct. Uh, and then uh, you'll, you'll be able to work on Election Day. Uh, a note from the Town Forest Committee that I didn't have a chance to uh, send to Caitlin um, for the packet. The, uh, the Town Tree Warden has marked uh, a number of dead trees at the Council Ring that are to be cut during the, their thinning project. Uh, our forester will, will prepare the technical specifications for a bid. And the goal is to bid the project in the early fall so that thinning can be done in late fall or early winter. So I think it's in town committee, the town forest committee uh, feels, and I feel it's important to get this information out to the public so that when they hear a chainsaw in the town forest, they know that um, it is, um, it's legitimate. And that's it. Okay, thank you. Mark. Uh, quick question if I could, and maybe it's to Laura who's in the room. If a Reading registered voter decides to be an election worker, I assume there's a provision that they can in fact vote uh, during the allotted time as well? As, yeah. oh, they can vote on election day? On election day. Yes. Great. Thank you. Um, only update would be um, from the RMLD, the um, battery storage uh, system is now online. I reported this actually at the last meeting um, when they did the groundbreaking ceremony, but I believe it's up and running. Great. That's it. Okay. Well, um, I've got one small piece of um, update. Uh, the Postmark project is, as you have probably noticed, is really ready to come out of the ground. Um, it's it's full bore, um, and I did have an opportunity, although I've only been back in town for about uh, 36 hours, um, I spoke with them um, in my role as liaison to that project. 
Um, and they're proud to announce that they're, you know, on schedule, um, marching along, and they're preparing the site really now so that it's uh, clean and orderly. They want to be able to, you know, participate and put a good face uh, on the, you know, on the Fall Street Fair. Um, and they also wanted to, um, they let me know that uh, commercial space one, which is if you think about the old post office, the, at the end of the ramp, you came up the ramp and you know, there was a space on the, if you're facing the building on the far left, will be opening as a sales office um, in mid-September. They are far enough along that that time will be happening soon. I know we have some business with uh, regards to them a little later uh, today. Uh, we're going to approve a monitoring agent for that um, project um, that's relative to the affordable nature of what's going to be going on. So, um, so that project's moving right along. Um, I have actually been away for over three weeks at the, um, and I just bring this up because I, I think it's important to understand a, a major event that happened in this country that is something to smile about. Um, the World Scout Jamboree um, erupted out of the mountains of West Virginia, um, and I was there three and a half weeks. It became a city of 55,000. 45,000 scouts from around the world, um, 6,000 of their leaders and 4,000 of staff. And I found it interesting and uplifting to see that we had 150 countries, all of these kids who had not known each other, um, found a way to communicate with each other, found a way to sing and dance and have a good time and enjoy friendship and fellowship, and do all of those things. I mean. Um, people around the world could learn a lot from what was going on in that 55,000 person city in the mountains of West Virginia. So I passed that along. That's kind of where I've been, so I have not been able to make any of the other committee meetings along the way. Um, tonight, um, we do have we're, we do have a, a number of things to do. Um, we're going to be appointing a board and committee member committee members uh, in just a few minutes. Uh, we're going to have an update um, on our services timeless clock project. I'm so glad to see you here in the room uh, honoring Camille Anthony. Um, we've got some internal borrowing to approve. Uh, I mentioned to you earlier we've got to appoint a monitoring agent. Um, I would say that a very big part of our evening tonight um, a very important part of our evening. Um, Victor's going to be visiting us to discuss the, his guidance and our discussion on the senior tax relief. It is that time for us to recreate the home rule petition and we really do need to get a vote done on that this evening. Um, we've also got some select board policies to look at in the context of the DPW and we're going to have a visit from uh, Jane Casello around that and several other you know topics that are related to the DPW. W, second water meters and uh, some uh, discussion around uh, waste zero recycling another option that we've got there so uh, we've got a it's a kind of a compact group of things to do and we'll be working on those um, I'd like to hear the town managers report Bob Ann. oh Ann, I'm so sorry and I, I will not neglect you again even though you're That's so quite all right. a, a voice on the other side of the black box I'm so sorry to have uh, skipped you. Could you give us your liaison report? Uh, no worries at all. I do not have a liaison report for, for this week. Okay. Oh. Baby's good though, right? That's the most important Baby is excellent. right now. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Glad to hear that. You know, before I go to you, Bob, um, and, um, particularly Laura, you're here in the room and the solicitation for um, um, for new voting um, you know, assistance. Yeah. We lost a really important one um, this past week. Gloria Hulse, um, who is a who is a dear friend of our family, um, you know, spent years as a teacher at the at the Sawyer uh, nursery nursery school, and has spent many years working with you, Laura. And I know you're going to miss her enormously. Um, just personally and in light of all of the things that you know I know what a valuable uh, member of the 
uh, of the election board she was, and I just want to take a moment and pay a little tribute to her and what she's done for this town and the many children in this town over the course of the year. So Gloria will be missed. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay, Bob, you're on. John, yes. I forgot one thing yes. in my in the report, and that is, you know, the board is is trying to mix up our where we hold our office hours. Um, I will be holding office hours this Saturday morning, 10 o'clock at Cafe Nero. So I just wanted to remind everybody about that. Thanks, awesome. John. Yep. And finally, we are going to get to you, Bob. Go yeah, I'm, for it. I'm just asking for IT help for anyone that knows how to do a projector here. Uh-oh. Uh, um, a couple of uh, community notes. Um, on <clears throat> September 25th, the ARCASA annual meeting will be held. It's going to be at the Jordan's IMAX Theater. It's going to be a screening of the first day uh, movie, so I want everyone to get that date on the calendar. Uh, last week, uh, Mark and I and a couple other folks started planning for September 26th, another community conversation at the public library. This one would be called a matter of civility. So again, September 25th and September 26th, two important community events. What time is the September 26th? I believe uh, they're each at 7.30, okay. but I'll double check on that. Um, a couple of responses to uh, board emails that have come in over the last few weeks since you last met. Um, <clears throat> One comment was, um, there was that the reverse 911 system was used for the uh, Reading 375th celebration, and why can't it be used for other things? For instance, uh, the day of an election. <coughs> uh, the, the philosophy so far, and it's been since we started using it, has been for road closures. So the Reading 375th was only advertised because there were road closures, and the public needed to be aware of when roads were closed. The advertisement was not for the event itself. For, for that's worth. Got it. There was another comment about um, some interest in uh, playground safety and the material that we're putting on the playgrounds. And I would suggest that anyone with a concern go to our board of health and ask about that. Um, we are following state guidelines. If the state guidelines need some work and need some revision, then the board of health is the right vehicle to go through for that. Um, there's been a couple of questions on um, Haverhill Street and Main Street paving. <clears throat> uh, let me just sort of start off by giving you an up update on Haverhill Street. We hired, we fo we're following a process that the uh, Mass DOT uh, insisted that we use. So we hired a consultant at our expense. They began collecting data on July 22nd, and they are now done collecting data. There was a suggestion from both ourselves and afterwards a member of the community, shouldn't we wait till September? And MassDOT assured us that they have models that can adjust for when it is and that we should, with all due haste, get this work done. So we did. Um, let me read to you uh, an email received today from the consultant. And again, please bear in mind, this is the consultant's opinion. This is not MassDOT's opinion, but nonetheless. Uh, we have collected the speed data along Haverhill Street, and we are in the process of analyzing the data to see what speed limit or limits would be appropriate for this roadway. Based on an initial review of the data, it seems that a posted speed limit of 35 or 40 miles an hour would be appropriate, but we still need to complete our review. Also, we still need to analyze crash data to see if there are specific trends along the roadway that could be representative of a speed-related issue. Once we have our complete findings, we'll be sure to let you know. So that's, that's that. And that was from Mass DOT? No, that was from a consultant that we hired, not Mass oh, DOT. Okay, okay, He's okay, going okay, to sub okay. submit his findings Bob, to, to Mass DOT. Bob, did you, yes, say, did you say uh, 30 or 40 or 35? 35 or 40, or 40 was the consultant's okay. opinion based on his experience. Bob, okay. is he, uh, as part of how we've hired this consultant, is this person tasked to make a recommendation? No. Just to provide He's data. giving us his opinion based on the data he has seen. Okay. Mass DOT doesn't care about his opinion or our opinion. They'll make their own call. Thank you. Um, on, on your next meeting on the 27th, I'll give a more complete update on the Main Street paving project, uh, both the southern one that has begun and the northern one um, you know, that would follow. Um, there was one other uh, email, and it was about uh, employees, employee retention. Um, the chair, uh, Chair Vanessa, had previously asked us to put that on the agenda. It is on the agenda. I think it's for November. It's just before the budget meetings when our HR director will come in and discuss uh, employee retention as well as other HR-related issues. 
Um, thank you, John. That's all I have. To Brown. Thank you. Mr. Brown, Andy, I want to thank you for your email. Just come up so Ann can hear. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, how'd you do that? Andy, I want to thank you for your uh, recognizing the charter. It saves me a lot of work in going out and getting 2,000 signatures on your, your recall election. Uh, and one thing I don't think many people know about Gloria, she was the one that was instrumental in getting passage to have the uh, warrant picked up at the police station instead of mailing him out. And that saved the town a hell of a lot of money over the course of the years. Yep. And she was a good Yes, she was a good person. Any other public comment? Hearing none, let's move to our first item. Um, and we have a report from the VASC about um, appointing boards and committees. Uh, yes, um, Vanessa is not here tonight, so I will um, fill in for her. We uh, interviewed Denise McCarthy uh, for the associate position on the Climate Advisory Committee. Mm -hmm. um, we um, did not interview Catherine, Kate Kaminer, and Mary Ellen Killian um, for, to become full members of the Recreation Committee because they've both been on that committee for so long and have served well. In any event, uh, the VASC recommends uh, that we appoint the Kaminer to a full position on the Rec Committee uh, and the uh, and Marianne Killian to a full position on the Rec Committee and Denise McCarthy to an associate position on the Climate Advisory Committee. And Mark has these motions. Okay. For us. Any discussion from the board? Very good candidates. Come. No. I think now. I think uh, with Kate and um, Mary Ellen, they they are in associate roles now. Is that correct? Yes. 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 So that yeah. okay. So they're going to move into. I guess they're filling vacancies. Yes. Um, and is that going to leave a number of vacancies on the associates uh, side? For associates, for associates. Yeah, yeah, but not full. Okay. Yeah. Just a odd question. Anne, anything on your mind here? No, I'm, I'm happy to follow the recommendation of that. Okay. You're on, Mr. Doctor. Uh, would the chair allow me to make one motion with all three people to take a vote, or you prefer one at a time? Fine with me. Uh, but you're going to have to, we can do one motion, but we've got to name all three people to their appropriate. Board appoint Catherine Kaminer to a full position on the Recreation Committee with the term ending June 30, 2021. Second is move that the board appoint Mary Ellen Killian to a full position on the Recreation Committee with the term ending June 30, 2021. And the third is move that the board appoint Denise McCarthy to an associate position on the Climate Advisory Committee with the term ending June 30, 2020. Is there a second? Second. Um, Sorry, is the last motion 2020 or 2021? 2020. She's filling filling out a check. So she'll have to go through Okay. Yeah, plus she's an associate, so. Yeah, they're, those are one year anyway, so I think that's what that's all about, so. Um, okay, so we need to have a roll call vote on the, this motion. Um, Ann? Yes. Mark? Yes. Andy? Yes. And John Halsey? Yes. Okay. Uh, this brings us to a fun part. Um, <laughs> And fun in that, you know, we, we lost a dear friend and public servant in Camille Anthony uh, earlier this year. And, um, you know, and I, and I don't want to steal any thunder, but I'm so glad to hear that something of permanence is finding its way um, towards honoring her service. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Megan and to Angela. And it looks like it's showtime now. We get the thing works. This is the time. Who pulled that off? Who got the thing to work? Yes, please. Thank you. So Andrew playing, but I'm not sure. Okay, so now there's a there's so and, and there's there um hi, my name is Megan Young and with me is Angela Binda. We are representative of the Friends of Camille. Um, and um, hopefully you all will see on TV there's um, it's the services timeless fund. It is to honor, as um, John said, Camille Anthony, who was the longest, one of the longest serving board members, at the time Board of Selectmen members. Um, it is a group of folks during um, Camille's um, service 
um, came up to me and actually said that, you know, Camille had always wanted a clock, and could we do this? And um, my opinion is always, if there's a will, there's a way, right? So um, anyway, with that, um, we knew that we had to, if we were to raise money, the one thing we wanted to do is um, look at creating a you know, bank account. So we were working with Reading Corporate Bank, and they're like, well, if you do that, you mean it's going to be a tax event for you, Megan? And I was like, pause. We need to find a good not-for-profit person to help us. So we had the great fortune of having um, the Reading um, Rotary said, we're in. We will uh, create, and the board voted on creating their own fund for it, and it's called the Services Timeless Fund, but it's through the Reading Rotary. So what that means, if, if you do contribute, you will get a tax donation, or to, it will be tax, it, it's tax a tax deductible. Thank you, a tax deductible donation. So that was really lovely. Um, and then the other part that we got immediately from John, from Bob, was that the that the town would cooperate, would would help make this happen. So it's just a, a wonderful, you know, and we've seen this so many times in town how they, when people rise to the occasion and do get something done. So anyway, that's good. that's really where we are. And thank you for giving, letting us give you an update. Know that when we started it, I just heard it from Fran that it was something that that Camille was interested in. People said, why would Camille be interested in a clock? Well, since that time, I can tell you the Reading Rotary, uh, Board of Selectmen, the EDC folks. Um, my husband would say that Camille always mentioned a clock any time that she went to the Mass Municipal Association. So I feel that strongly that she's smiling at uh, from above at, at, at um, what we're doing. So uh, what we've done is we put together a work plan. Right, and it and it and we're starting the fundraising. It's been slow during the summer. We plan to really kick it off um, in September. Um, we've gone to and Angela has pictures of going. And if you don't mind me, Go as we're it. talking, yeah. um, we went to a clock. Angela and Fran Osborne went to a clock factory, um, and this is a, a clock factory in Massachusetts. So it would be a Massachusetts-made clock. Everything in that clock, all parts, frames, whatever, are all done in this factory. They're, so, the, they're the only manufacturers where all of the parts, everything is made um, in the in the factory. In the factory. So, yeah. And so one of the things that you'll see is there's many, many clock designs and shapes, and it's all really going to depend on working with the town to find a good place for it. Um, the, the clock manufacturer themselves would do renderings for us. If once we decide on, you know, once the town decides on what, you know, clock that we want, we agree on a location, they'll do renderings for us. They can actually put in six foot tall, and there's, a, there's actually a six foot tall gentleman that happened to accompany us. And so he and Angela both kind of wanted to get give you guys an idea of like size. You can, oh, go, go. And, uh, Want me to go back. Back. Yeah, so th there are all sorts of different ways to personalize it. You can pick out Roman numbers or um, you can put this one says cla uh, class of 2019. So there are a lot of different options on placements to put, um, you know, whatever in memory of or whatever. This is an example of you can see it's really the scale. This is obviously this is in front of their factory building and they have a big green. That's a huge clock. It's a four sided clock. Um, and it's really big, but it's completely appropriate for that space. I would not think that something like that would <laughs> work in our downtown or by the depot. But you know, there are four-sided clocks and two-sided clocks, and um, lots of different ways yeah, to that's personalize 20 feet it. Tall. Yeah, that's a big. That's clock. exactly. So we're not going there. Yeah. And one of the things that they said we can actually oh that's the, um, th that we can do is it, if we send them pictures of locations with something like a six foot tall person standing there they can um, put you know they'll be able to drop different things into it and send it back to us so yep. we could see what it would look like 
Um, and as we were going through, you saw there were some of them smaller, some of them larger. So there are ways to sort of see what would this look like at different places. Right. So and, bottom and line, this is there. This yeah. is a catalog. Bottom that, line is, we find an appropriate one. That they are. We really feel like it's a good manufacturer, and we can find something appropriate and and that would fit no. the right space and time, and it would be a lovely addition. And the clock might work <laughs> as a just as a, just as an option. We're, we're like we're thinking that the clock might actually work. Can be a good and a good beacon and a good and a good kind of anchor for um, Haven Street somewhere, right? And and so um, anyway, that's really where we are. What we are asking, thinking about, um, with uh, Bill still being around, one of the things that we really wanted to think about is maybe at the Fall Street Fair, do some kind of like you know cutting a ribbon or just raising some awareness that he could be there and know that we're going. So is this Bill way. and his daughters involved in? Yeah, I'm sure they're going to be part of your committee discussion yes. about they are. They are. selection yes. which is great because I, yep. I know they have great interest in Absolutely. They, they, they love this idea and they and of course you're great friends of Camille's as many people were but I know she had a close circle that's very interesting. Absolutely so. and, and she has so many affinity groups but the one thing yeah. that is really the, the thing that I do want to say is the family's totally involved in and, and have trusted entrusted in us to keep them posted Good. and get things going. So anyway, that's the update. Um, I think down at the it. very you can see I the different styles or you know where yeah. whatever is whatever site you can pick four sided, it's, two sided, different styles to fit in with the location. There's way more thing many ways to do this, but you know, again, we'll just do something Enough choices a, to drive a, us a lot yeah. of choices yeah. Yeah. Um, to drive us, but say that any you know anywhere is like but coming and I agree with you like finding a place that we all agree on and then and going from there so anyway thank you for the time I want to say again if you, you can make your donation online um, and you can send a check into the Reading Co-op all of its under service is timeless someone really came up with a really good brand for us that I absolutely love and ever and really has appealed to people so I think it's a really good thing for our town to get around so there's one fund one fund and is there a, is there a website or a Facebook page or something we don't have a Facebook page but we'll be creating one and also to keep people posted about how the funding is coming yeah. um, but right now you can go right online and um, and and contribute to the Reading Rotary and where, where on, through the Rotary Rotary go to the Rotary website you can yep earmark that all you have to say okay. is in honor of Camille or service is timeless Got and it. it comes right to me so it is one fund, even though it may say a couple of different things. It's one fund. One fund. All devoted to this. And all that's, going that's great so that people know that. And we'll just continue to keep talking about it. Will you guys have a booth, uh, a little booth talking about it at the Fall Street? Yes. Park? I think Good. we'll have a yeah. booth or actually looking at putting it in multiple places maybe through the town we can maybe have like something if you're interested like leave flyers there yep. leave flyers at the rotary we're going to try to get the word out through the fall street fair yep i think and there'll be a lot of people that are going to want to participate in this okay. it'll be a nice landmark for the town honoring a landmark person that's great so. thank you very much for the yep. time and and for all your help Great, thanks. We'll All look right. forward to having you come back and keep us updated. All right. Great, Megan, I cool. think you can simply uh, Thank you Google so much. service is timeless. And, and, and I think people can simply Google service is timeless and it pops up. Yes. Uh, Thank you. Great. It's, it's For Google. For people who don't, don't, <laughs> don't necessarily remember <laughs> all the details. All righty. Great. Google it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to get down to how the sausage is made. We're done with the fun. <laughs> little internal borrowing going on, I think. Um, you're on. So, the packages that we have in front of you have all the details. Yep. There is one small, well, there is one change into it, and that's because um, the problem with internal borrowing is that what we try to do is we try our best to estimate the cash flow for each project and it's very difficult. Uh, yesterday in the morning I just got another update on the um, security improvement cash flow and 
it comes out that we need to borrow a little more than what we expected to borrow. So I have the updated forms if you want to pass it uh, along. Just a little background uh, for the borrowing. All of the projects that you have in front of you, they were approved from the town meeting back in April. The total ask for the internal borrowing is five million four hundred and twenty and twenty-five thousand. Um, the details are in the package. <clears throat> the reason that we do the internal borrowing is that we some of the projects they start early, some start later in the in the year. So what we try to do is we want to have the cash available and we don't want to hold this project anymore. So what we do is we just do an internal borrowing and then the goal is to pay this internal borrowing back to the general fund by the end of June. So always it, by the end of the fiscal year. Always by the end of the yeah. fiscal year. Yep. Um, and then we'll, we'll do a permanent borrowing. Once we do the permanent borrowing, we'll pay it off to the general fund, and then um, the project is just going to go on normally. Uh, the, reason, the other reason that we do this is that the permanent borrowing is a complicated process. It's a time consuming and expensive. So what we try is we try to uh, time all of the project together and borrow only once. Hopefully we'll borrow only once so right. we combine them. That way is a little cheaper because uh, it, it can get expensive um, sure. to borrow a couple of times a year. Uh, but that's what that's where we are. So this is really a cash flow management thing. Exactly. This is nothing. There's no new funds. No. It's all stuff that's you know has already come through the town meeting. You know, right. filter and it's just managing our cash. You know. Yeah. Yes, Bob. Um, we had initially planned to borrow last June, uh, but honestly, there was no need for the cash that soon for any of these four projects. Right. And then looking at the uh, capital plan and the debt schedule going forward. Um, we thought maybe if we waited till a year from June, we had a couple more things coming up probably next April to add to it. Right. Um, and that indeed, of all the amount approved last April, we weren't going to need very much of it within those 12 months because some of these projects are multi-year. Um, so the uh, important change you'll see at November town meeting is um, we had some debt service scheduled for the current year that we don't need anymore because it's going to be pushed out a year. So we're going to ask November town meeting probably to reduce the debt budget and do some extra capital at November town meeting, just so you're aware. Uh, um, questions for Bob or Andrew? Andy? Mark? Do have a question. Um, so I understand the cash flow side. So in reality, because we're in a strong cash position at the moment, we're able to do this. Right. And we're saving months, probably, of instead of borrowing $5 million, we're saving the interest, or we're saving the difference between the cost to borrow and, and probably the 2% return that we get. Correct. Thank you. <laughs> Andy, any questions? No. And anything you'd like to ask Andy or Bob about this? Uh, no, I, I, I have my questions answered. Thank you. Okay. So um, I think that being the case, if there's no other questions or discussion, um, Mark, you're going to be on here. All right. Uh, the amounts that we have listed here now, the corrected amounts? So they should be. Yep. Two yeah, point these two. came out tonight. So. Okay. Great. Move to approve the advance of funds in lieu of borrowing for the following project, projects with the understanding that the town will reimburse the general fund with proceeds from a note or bond within the fiscal year. Item one, turf two, which was article 15 of April 19 town meeting, uh, the amount of $2.225 million, representing the entire amount. Item two, building security improvements, which was article 16 from that same April 19 town meeting, the amount of 1.7 million out of a total of 4 million that was authorized in that article. Item three, the Auburn Street water tank, which was article 17 of April 19 town meeting, the amount of uh, one half million dollars, and that's out of the 4.5 million that's authorized. And item four, Grove Street water main, which was article 18 from April 19 town meeting, and the amount of one million dollars representing the entire amount. Is it, do I hear second? Second. Second. Okay. Um, any discussion on the motion? Nope. Hearing none, we'll do, have a... Do we want to just point out the changes from the packet? I think there's just two. Yeah, the new motions are... Right. I got them. Are, 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 are different from what's in the packet. Right. For the public, do we want to state that? Or? 
Uh, please feel free to do so. Yeah. You've got it. Yeah. One point seven million is one of them for right. building security. What's right. the other? Um, and I, 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 there may not be another, but I'm, okay. I'm trying yeah. to whip through these. Just to complete that, Andy, the what was in the packet was one million, I believe, on, on building right. security. That's now right. it's one point seven. Now it's one I think that I think, should be the only. I think one. that's the only one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just so for it's the public to know, the way that the forms, those forms go to the DOR, and there is a section on the form that just keeps track of all the previous amount will change due to that um, change to 1.7. So they, it's just a roll. Right? It keeps, it rolls Correct. up as you're doing it. Right. We may have to do this again, you know, um, on yeah, some other topic, need, yes. you know, before we get to the end of the fiscal year and do the, the big borrow. So, right, right, right. Um, um, any other discussion? So just to close on that, so that after we do this 5.425, that would leave a potential remaining limit of about 4.7 million. Yeah, another 5 million. Yeah. Which five will not be needed this fiscal year. Right. Okay, good. Good. So the, the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, so the big borrow will be this amount, it sounds well, like. It'll Unless be 10 something. or 11 million, whatever well, the total authorization was yeah. when we go to the public market as opposed to this area. Got so it. And that will happen, Bob, before the fiscal year? Before, yeah, before the year. Yeah. By June. Okay. Any other question or discussion, Anne? Anything on your mind? No. Okay. Thank you. That being the case, we'll have a roll call vote. Andy? Yes. Mark? Yes. Anne? Okay. Um, I could just I could pass these around if you could sign them. Could sign them. Yeah. There's four copies that you can sign. So, um, while we're signing that, um, it's time for us to talk about the, the monitoring agent for Postmark's 40R project. Uh, Bob, do you have that report? or I do. Um, there was a memo in your packet from Julie Mercier, the Community Development Director. Uh, at your last meeting, at tonight's meeting, and at your next meeting, you're going to be asked for three different projects to approve a monitoring agent. Um, there's a subset that it's not a large group in Massachusetts that does this work uh, but Julie uh, created a memo for you for the postmark 40R uh, explaining the background uh, and explaining that the Barnstable Housing Authority was a good choice uh, that they made for this project so there's a motion uh, to approve the Barnstable Housing Authority as the monitoring agent if you remember the discussion from the last time, um, sadly, a prior housing uh, monitoring agent rather had passed away and needed to be replaced for, for an older project, I think it was Reading Woods. Um, this is for the new project. You'll see another one for a new 40R at your next meeting as well. And all new projects that have an affordable housing component will have this aspect. So um, I think it's important to notice that something you mentioned. Um, the public might wonder why are we appointing the Barnstable Housing Authority. They have great expertise project rather than a rental project, and the scope of it is, I think, has a it is shelf different. life. It you know, it's different than rental. Yeah, it's yeah. very different. So, um, any other questions or discussion, Mark? To your point, John. So at the last meeting, we approved a new monitoring service Correct. for everything in town except this. Uh, no, no, no. Just for one older project. One older project. Um, I want to say Redding Woods. Um, I think it was Redding Woods that we did last. <coughs> and uh, next meeting you'll see, uh, I believe it's a different uh, monitoring agent for a third project. The Sunoco, if you will, Main Street project. Right. Any other questions on this particular, the monitoring agent? And anything on your mind? Um, I I did think it was interesting that the Barnstable Housing Authority would be the, the designated agent and just curious how common it is for um, other communities housing authorities authorities to act um, as the monitoring agent for other communities. Um, I can just say, Anne, this is the first time I've seen it. Obviously I have limited background in that, but I did think it was a little bit a little bit different. I think there's some um it, it, the, the little bit of research I did in the last 24 hours, I actually was speaking with the developers, um, and they commented on the fact that it's very different when you're doing when a you're condominium selling. project yeah. when you're selling. Um, that's first off, and secondly, the you know the people doing this, um, 
there's some limits to, you know, not everybody's doing it anymore, you know, so um, it seems like we've got the right people here, even though it seems odd that it would be somebody from Barnstable, but um, it's, I think it's pretty straightforward about how they do it. Any other questions before we entertain a motion? Uh, hearing none, Mark, you're on. Move that the board approve Barnstable Housing Authority as the monitoring agent for the postmark 40R development. Second. Do I have a second? Second. Um, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll um, start the roll call with Andy. Yes. Mark? Yes. Ann? Yes. And Halsey, yes. Okay. Well, it's showtime, Victor. Here we go. <laughs> it's now time for uh, for us to talk about and really seek some guidance here as it's senior tax relief time again. Uh, or at least from the standpoint, I'm guessing, Victor, we've got to be thinking about our next, our next home rule petition. Is that kind of where we are? Uh, yeah, um, home rule petitions by nature, uh, particularly those financial related for cities and towns, uh, carry a three year sunset clause. We are administering uh, the third year of our Reading Senior Discount, and the last count uh, when I left the office a little while ago, over 80 people applied on awesome. August 1st. So the pace is brisk, and hopefully, we get plenty of new people. That's great. Uh, what we're here to discuss is uh, some, I think all of you have uh, understand where I'm coming from and it's time to take a look at the exemption that uh, we put forth before the town to enact as a home rule petition. And as it relates just to the home rule petition, honestly only suggesting one small change. If you like, I do have a PowerPoint that takes a little bit through the history I can do 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, whatever you prefer. Well, let's do it in the middle someplace. Oh, okay. 15 minutes. This is, I, I do think this is important for us to review the minutes and, and yep. you know, and, and I know that, you know, in, in talking to you and others that um, you've suddenly become, not suddenly, but over the last three years as a result of the work that you did and the, and the board did in, in, in affecting this, we're kind of the, a, cent, a center of information, shall we say, and you answer a lot of questions for a lot of people, so why don't you bring us up to date and then we'll see where we go from there. Great. Through our little um, outline we have up here, it was first enacted for fiscal year 2018, passed by a special town meeting, uh, and forwarded to the state legislature to be approved as a home rule petition. As I mentioned, typically they have a three year sunset clause. And as a result, the RSD must be reapproved both locally uh, and at the state level to continue. Excuse me, Victor. And do you have this presentation in front of you? Yes, I do. Thanks. Everything, everything that was going to go up here that we're seeing for the first time, she actually got Great. electronically in advance. So. She's with us all the way. The initial considerations of creating uh, a type of senior discount, uh, we, we looked for the, uh, we used a state uh, means test that was already in place, the senior circuit breaker income tax uh, credit. A local means test would be too difficult to implement with existing staff, and discussions would have delayed implementation of the RSD. Um, since we've done this, I can't count the number of communities that have contacted me, but very few have been able to enact tax relief on their own because they go down these black holes. Discussions on top of discussions, rather than taking action and trying to help people sooner rather than later. If you overthink it, you'll never get it going. Yep. Um, we had to use a residential tax shift to uh, cover the cost. Um, the basic points are 10 years of residential ownership in Reading, no other significant assets beyond the intended pool of recipients, and no additional costs to the town. This is what we tried to uh, come up with, and we did succeed. Uh, the RSD is a result of ideas expressed during override discussions, 
designed to assist long-term senior Reading residents age in place. We looked at Wayland and Sudbury as examples of senior tax relief. They both had a model out there and we took pieces of each to create our own. For ease and simplicity, again, we use the Senior Circuit Breaker Income Tax Credit as the primary qualifier. The cost of the program is borne by the rest of the residential tax base. It's administered without additional cost to the town, and in my estimation, the application process is easy and straightforward. In addition to many meetings of the Select Board, we've done the following. Televised meetings at the Senior Center, various articles in the local newspaper. We put a mailer in with all quarter one tax bills, which are the tax bills due and payable August 1st. We send individual letters to prior, uh, prior applicants and shameless plug, I'll be at the Senior Center on August 14th, talking about this again and all the other exemptions that are offered uh, by the state through our office. You're going to be cooking hot dogs and hamburgers out there? Too. I'll be ducking tomatoes mostly. <laughs> yes. I mean, there is lunch, I believe. Yes, there is lunch. Most of it on my shirt. Uh, <laughs> Uh, by the numbers, fiscal year 2018, we had 196 applicants and 186 were granted. Those that didn't qualify, uh, it's because of the way their real estate trusts were structured. And we adhere to the state interpretation for other statutory exemptions, right. whereby you must be both a trustee and have beneficial interest in the property. Uh, the select board approved a reimbursement rate of 200%. The max credit that year was $2,140, with the least amount being $64. Total tax dollars shifted, a little over $361,000. It added about $0.04 cents to the residential tax rate and cost the average taxpayer about $20. The average tax savings that year was 30%. Fiscal 19, 183 applicants and 177 granted. Again, trust issues knock some people yeah. out of the box. The reimbursement rate was 150%. Max credit was 1620, with the least being $165. And the total tax dollars shifted were uh, a little over $262,000. It added about two cents to the residential tax rate, and it costs roughly about $10. Uh, for the average single family taxpayer, but there was a CIP shift of 1.02, which absorbed uh, yeah. a portion of yeah. that. And the average savings again in that year was 20%. Uh, this is just a notice that we sent in uh, with all tax bills that went out. And it's also up on our website, just reminding people you have to re reapply yearly for this form of tax relief. And you know, tell them to uh, touch base with us or check our website. Uh, many communities, again, have contacted Reading about our Reading Senior Discount, varying stages of the state home rule petition approval process, Wakefield being one of them. My state reps uh, jumped on board and mine seems to be delayed while Jason catches up in Winchester and uh, Paul in Melrose. So I'm a victim of my own success there. Uh, I, John said I've become a go-to person on this. I gave a presentation over 150 assessors, which is more fun than it sounds, really. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah. In our annual meeting. <laughs> you try to convince yourself or us? I got a free pocket protector. <laughs> They're a wild bunch. You can't uh, like those. But many municipal leaders are looking to us as an example of what can be easily achieved. Our next home rule petition. Going forward, my biggest recommendation, my only recommendation really is that affects the uh, upcoming home rule petition, will be a fixed compensation level at 150%. It alleviates the uncertainty regarding the amount to be granted. One of the questions we get, oh, 80 questions we got at the counter, how much are we going to get? Well, that's up to the Board of Selectmen, so stay tuned. Be nice to give them an answer before they leave. Yeah. Um, well, that's kind of the... It's slightly ahead of the midpoint of, didn't we say it would be, I'm trying to remember when so we originally crafted this, to from, from, yeah. Yeah, from 50% up to 200%, so yeah. this goes to the higher side.
but it locks it to avoid you know confusion or wondering or even political jockeying that could go on. I mean, no, let's just be honest about it. Well, I think that you bring up an excellent point because we went into the unknown not knowing. The only definites I had when we started this were we have 640 people that get a, uh, a senior circuit breaker. Yeah, right. The state data isn't broken down by renters versus owners. So all I could do was examine Sudbury and Wayland's numbers, and I said, basically, based on their numbers, we should get about a third, or around 210 people or so. Um, how much to give? I don't know. I don't know what kind of range is going to come through that door, and we could add 400 people. So we left the range wide open, mostly to back into a cap, a mental cap, where we didn't want to go shifting more than 1% of right. the tax burden onto the residential class. Fortunately, our numbers are well, yeah, way below yeah, that. As I remember, the idea was because we didn't know. Exactly. We didn't know what was going to happen, and we kind of knew three years ago that we were going to have the discussion today yeah. with data, yeah. um, which we did not have at that time. So, uh, you know, and, and when you stop to think about this, I mean, somewhere between 10 and $20 is what the average taxpayer has done to really help, you know, um, roughly close to 200 Mm -hmm. homeowners, which yep. is kind of substantial when you stop to think about it. And um, the the commercial offset has made that even less expensive. It's, it's yes. Expensive. So, you know, looks like everybody's winning in this deal. Um, so, so you think the only thing, the only change is really just kind of, that's the, the takeaway. We had a good target, just let's lock it in now. And that's where I'm at. Uh, one of my concerns that I was, uh, that I expressed, 200% is a little bit too much tax relief in year one because of unintended consequences. 150% proved to be a nice, sweet spot. Uh, I wish I had this year's data yeah. uh, completed to you know, bolster yeah, my the legislation doesn't allow that, us to do that, yeah. though. I mean, but that's where I, I'm feeling we'll be. But even with the too much tax relief, it, it knocks some people out of the box the following year because they don't meet the minimum qualifications to receive the senior circuit breaker income tax credit. But between both years, we helped 120 folks each year, the same people, two years in a row. That shows us that their income, they pay significantly more than 10% of their income towards local property taxes. And more than likely, will be the greatest beneficiaries of this program. And again, it would be at 150%, it's substantive, it's meaningful, and it's helpful, and it's steady. John? Yes. A um, couple of things, Victor. Just to repeat what you said about kicking them out of the box, um, the 200% gave them enough money back that they were above the income line. Below the 10% threshold Below, okay. on uh, for the senior circuit the circuit program, program. And the so then they didn't year. apply the next, they weren't, they couldn't, they couldn't apply the next year, right. So, um, and then the other question I had was, I thought that for the previous two years, the tax, this tax burden was not um, carried by the residents, but rather by the businesses when we did two tax splits in a row. Or what am I missing? Okay, to be technical, yeah, you're correct. The first year, in order to achieve an equilibrium based upon the residential versus commercial split, our first year we did a tax shift of, and this number is ingrained in my mind, 1.0028%. You came up with it. <laughs> you tell me what you want. That's you, 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 you want the pizza many, well done. Many. We went, you know, 
which that, that was you know didn't that equalize the business contribution to the yeah. roughly yeah because I, I think it almost gave poor Victor a, a, a hard a heart attack well you couldn't pass it through Andy that no 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 originally I know, you couldn't but pass it through the business right so in order to be able to create some kind of an equity situation to be fair to, to, to all taxpayers we split we did that first split that was three years ago I think yep, yep. fiscal 18 and it was designed so that it would be so right. that it would share equally in the in the cost now the last split actually went a little bit more at one point a little bit more yeah, yeah. Um, in that first year we tried to keep the town at one tax rate right but when you're slicing it it didn't result in that there was a two or three cent difference right yeah. uh, when you're slicing the numbers that small it's rounding is gonna throw it off yeah and I and I do um, un understand that we we asked a lot of you that year so thanks um, and then the second year 1.02 percent but uh, mark you had a question uh, yeah, a, a more kind of comment. So, mm -hmm. um, to your point, Victor, with the, the 150 percent, we could be simple, reliable, and consistent. Yes. Make it very clear to people what's happening. You mentioned in um, your note to us that there were 30 or so people that missed out last year that you expected would apply this year, that they perhaps could have qualified, and we'll come back in, most likely. There were folks under the mistaken impression that this is a forever exemption. One time. Yeah, no exemption is forever. Um, every year I feel bad, but disabled veterans come in and apply. Mm. Uh, elderly and infirm come in to apply for their statutory exemptions. Um, I don't know if I wasn't clear in my discussions at the senior center or any time I spoke publicly, but that's why we updated our letters going out. You have to apply every year. Um, direct mailings to people that applied in prior years will continue that to make sure they understand you must apply every year because you may not qualify for the circuit breaker every year. Right. I did some quick math. Just take the, if the, those 30 people did qualify, came back in and got the average per person relief, mm -hmm. that would be another $45,000. So the, the total transfer, if you will, would have been about $300,000 mm -hmm. in that range, which to me feels you know, about right and kind of what I think the intent was and what the intent should be. Um, couple other questions you, you mentioned that uh, if we could be clear at the board level that would open up some of your time and perhaps the opportunity to leave the window open a little bit longer for people to apply indeed and so I applaud that I think that's really a great idea thank you um, one of the other things that as projects like uh, Redding Woods and Johnson Woods, the ownership threshold uh, goes over 10 years. We can uh, more than likely see increased participation yeah. in this program. It's also good to be cognizant of the cost we're passing on to other taxpayers. Um, but what you mentioned about uh, pre-classification and, and a rate, it's a separate discussion from what we have to do relative to uh, updating the home loan petition, which we can have as part of this, or we can have it right after. <laughs> you know, um, and do you have questions or comments for um, for Victor? Um, I think more of a comment, really. Um, I appreciated that um, Victor and or Bob included in the packet the brochure that is distributed regarding the different statutory and town bases for, for tax relief in town. Um, but I was wondering, that I, I was just hoping that um, Victor might clarify for the public um, one additional form of tax relief that I believe is also available, um, not on a statutory, uh, not on a statutory basis, but um, by town practice, there is some opportunity for seniors to volunteer their time in exchange for tax relief. Is that correct? 
Yes, the senior tax work off program administered to the local senior center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would, uh, and I think this is probably not right for tonight's conversation, but I would um, welcome an opportunity uh, to speak with with you, Victor, um, about possibilities for expanding that or to allow it to be expanded to include to um, allow non-seniors who might be going through a temporary uh, financial hardship to be eligible uh, by some kind of volunteer service to the, to the town. I look forward to a separate discussion on that with you, Ann. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Victor. Um, I know this isn't a public hearing, but uh, Bill, you raised your hand, and I, I know you've been a, a close follower of this, and I welcome your comments. Yeah. Um, personal level, the first year we gave two, I got the 1070 back from the state. The next year, because I got that, I had less back from the state. This year, I got $440 back from the state because uh, it kept dropping. So the balance between the two, I think, had I got one on one the whole time, it would have been $230 difference. So, so the one and a half, I think. The one and a half I sounds think, like it's the magic number. I still, I still disagree with him. I think one's better, but I'll take that one and a half. <laughs> He's an old Air Force man, too. <laughs> Thanks for your comments, Bill. I, I appreciate the. I appreciate your comments. Well, I, I know you I, followed I, this closely. I, I keep all my tax returns. Yep. I took them out and said, this, 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 this yep. one and a half will work. And I like simplicity. That's why I like Victor. <laughs> <laughs> so 80 applications and it's only the sixth. How yep. late, how, you're going to take them for the month of August? For yes. This? Okay. So that's a great start. Yeah. Well, so that's excellent. And, and I'm one of the 80. <laughs> yeah. It might, it might be number one. I'll open the window no. a little bit longer. <laughs> well, we haven't. We won't get to the part where we vote that. We're going to vote tonight about the new home rule petition. But you know, I think what you're what you're alluding to is once we fix the number, yes. Victor's going to be in a better position to have a more open end to this thing. But this is for the next round that we're talking about tonight. We won't get to the we won't get to the how much it is this year till in the fall. Exactly. Correct. That's important to note. Our discussions tonight about future yes. uh, home rule petitions. Yeah. Point. This is about getting this thing kicking down the road so that we can clear what we need to clear on Beacon Hill, which is always an adventure. Although our reps have done a My great job. My compliments to Brad Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they've done a great job helping us with this. And, you know, so, so tonight we're really, I mean, we will get to a vote here very shortly. Um, about this. Um, do you have anything else you want to tell us? Um, as far as the home rule petition goes, no. That's okay. what I humbly request. That I Everything's we'll the same and you're suggesting a fixed number at 150. Yes. Okay. Um, discussion from the board? No, I've, I've asked my question. Okay. Yes. And anything else on your mind? Mark? No, but I certainly feel very, I do feel very supportive of um, moving to, um, moving forward with this home rule petition. Great. I, I do as well. With that in mind, um, you, have a, you have a motion for us, Mark? Yes. So that the board yeah. support a factor of 1.5 times the amount of the state circuit breaker for local tax relief, as will be proposed in a home rule petition to November town meeting. Second. Any discussion on the motion? We have that the way that it's going to work best for you, Vic? Yes. Okay. That being the case, um, I actually am just thinking that because this is taking the form of a home rule petition, I may need to recuse myself based on my uh, day job working for the legislature. Okay. Okay. So since you're out of the room, that works pretty good. <laughs> okay. Plug your ears. Where's the hang? <laughs> All right, we're going to have a uh, roll call vote then. Andy? Yes. Mark? Yes. Calls a yes. Um, and one abstention. Um, go for it, Victor. Now, the, the other thing that, well, it doesn't impact the home rule petition. It's more procedural. Um, two ends of the spectrum. 2018, difficult for me to sit here and come to a pre-classification hearing with what I think all the scenarios can be. 
and then have more scenarios put my way and that requires I'm not complaining but it does require an inordinate amount of time to come up with the math and the analysis behind that um, if we can minimize our minimum residential factor selections to even numbers or half numbers like 1.01 uh, 1.02 .01, if there's some loose agreement that we can keep things like that let's recognize that this type of tax relief created no, despite our best efforts created two tax rates in town yeah. yep. additionally commercial tax rates always gonna be a little higher than the residential if we know that going into it I think that our factors can be a bit simpler to choose and if I don't have to come in for a pre-classification hearing where as I just explained try to come up with every scenario and then board comes up with 15 other scenarios that I fail to consider I have to do the math on those and prepare for actual classification and then we end up very long discussions that uh, are probably confusing to the taxpayer at home trying to follow along uh, I do my level best with my presentations to encompass everything uh, but I found that the more information I have going into it the easier it can be and everyone can still speak their piece as to where they're at uh, but it's a lot less number crunching and if I had that type of understanding I think I could easily open up the application process for the Reading Senior Discount to two months, August and September. That way I'll have my numbers beginning of October and we typically do classification middle October. Are you saying that for this year? Are you asking that for this year? Uh, I'll take anything I can get. <laughs> um, well, I mean, you know, it, it's material to understand that. We're in August now. If, if that was the prevailing sentiment and say, okay, we'll try this, Victor, this year. Um, well, I really can't because I've already advertised a hard timeline on this. Yeah. So this would be after this year going forward. So what you really need to hear from us is a general sense of you know I mean so for example this year what we've just given you is is the, is the guidance of this particular board you mm -hmm. know as to where the next home rule petition is yes. going to be built so maybe it's safe to say it since you've had at least three people vote in that direction that you know that's probably what you're going to be dealing with first of all this year um, I'm going to guess, and we already have a split tax rate that's an even number, um, and that split tax rate incorporates the the equity balance between more than compensates for the equity balance between the residential and the homeowners. Yes. So beyond that, are you saying, uh, are you asking the board to give you some idea of where what their thoughts are on on where the split's going to go? I obviously come up with, those of you familiar with my presentation, I come yeah. up with various ranges. I know you do. Um, those ranges are easy to come up with. That's not the hard part. The hard part is when the discussion turns to, well, what if we cut this one in half? And what if we look at it this way? And can we get this to that? Uh, one year I calculated a minimum residential factor on the fly on my cell phone quite the feat. <laughs> Normally I have my computer and my spreadsheets in front of me and it's easy to do that way. Trying to remember all the machinations and remember what your tax base is is kind of difficult. Uh, it's an uncomfortable position to be in. I, and, and I try to have everything planned out to a T. I can't speak for the board, but I, I can say to you I understand that complication. And I think just like the senior tax relief was new mm -hmm. the year that we tried to yep. make it balance got complicated oh, and yeah. cumbersome and yep. heated you know I mean there was all that going on yeah. it seems like we've kind of stepped beyond that mm -hmm. um, and you know I personally I'm just speaking personally I can't speak for the board um, 
simple's better. Um, I think that the pu the viewing public can understand it more easily. They can understand the discussion more easily. Um, so I, you know, I have no particular interest in um, in splitting hairs here. Um, I, I think that uh, I think about before we had senior tax relief. You'd come in with you know, some ideas. They were pretty simple. They were pretty straightforward. There were two or three or four, mm -hmm. you know, scenarios, and it was easy to pick. And on we went, and it got done quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and that's taken on its own life over the last several years that we may be able to get beyond now. Just thinking that out loud. I can't speak for what um, my fellow board members are going to say or do, but I'm just telling you where I'm coming from. Is that you know, simple is easier and it's, I think, better for the public to understand what's going on. So that's what I'd be looking for. Yes. Um, I, I agree with John in that um, simpler is better. I think in 2018, um, things went a little, got a little crazy. Um, uh, and, and perhaps not understandably, perhaps understandably so, because of the, it was the first time we had the mm -hmm. senior tax relief. But um, I thought that, my recollection of last year, um, you presented a nice suite of numbers, uh, some choices, mm -hmm. and that we, the board just discussed those choices. And, um, you know, not everyone liked the way it turned out, but the presentation was solid and clean, and, um, and, and the discussions were based on those, pre or those projected numbers. And um, I would be in support of, you know, having that type of simplicity moving forward in, in future discussions. Yes, Mark. Um, so, just to agree with, I think, uh, potentially the three of us here, I think what you're asking for is what, what are the scenarios you should come in prepared to discuss? Or the scenarios from my past practice, the pretty simple ones that I come in with, it's a pretty good range of scenarios. But I would ask if anyone's thinking anything different, just let me know, and I can easily incorporate yeah. it with them. In advance, you right. want that right. information right. in yeah. advance, so you can be prepared. Exactly. And I think we should pass that information along to Vanessa to let her know she is away at this time. But the four four of us are hearing you um, that it's not a it's so much better to get a simple presentation if you have advance notice as to what any one of the members might be thinking, because then it, then you could create it. And it's right there. My motives may be a little selfish, but the end result is we'll be giving additional time for senior tax relief. Yes. Yes. So we're going to take an already good program, open it up more, give people more time. And we'll have a shorter yeah. select board meeting. <laughs> Both of which are I didn't are think of that. Um, <laughs> I, I think it'll be clearer for the public as well. I don't know if Ann has a comment. Oh, no. Go, get there. Go ahead, Ann. I'm sorry. Oh, I think it'll be clearer for the public yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And anything on your on your side that you'd like to comment or ask a question? Not, not yeah. at the time. Thank you, John. Okay, good. I think we're good, Victor. I think I get. I think I hear what you're looking for, and I think all four of us do. And we'll make. I will make a point when I debrief with our chair. Um, your you know your wishes to just get a little advance notice so that you can be we make the whole thing simpler the object of extending time to our seniors i think is a great one and um, it doesn't sound like we can do it this year because you've already kind of we're already hard in a way, and everything and we got to stick with that but you know with the new home rule petition sounds like we'll just get better at this each time and the state will keep trying to figure out how we're doing it and try to replicate it and who knows if they'll ever get it done when we you have know. when you have a couple of hours i'll tell you about my battles there um, <laughs> <laughs> i can only imagine that would be some entertainment Victor. we should probably do that over lunch sometime uh, folks thank you so very much and as thank always thank feel you, free to reach out to me with any questions you may have thank you thanks Victor. thanks very thank much thank you very much have a great night okay. you too Okay, we're marching right along here. It's still 4.30. It's like yeah, it's 4.30. We're no. doing good. <laughs> um, so the next thing we have on the agenda, Jane, you and Chris are on, right? You guys ready to rock? Oh, yeah. Good.
No pressure, but we're running ahead of schedule. <laughs> That's a good thing, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. If I could I just know. make an introductory remark that um, this is part of select board policy, I think it's Article 4. Uh, tonight's discussion is not meant to be highly organized and precise. It's meant to be a very broad discussion introducing a topic. Um, there's lots of moving parts uh, at some point as the board wishes. There can be a follow-up discussion or two and eventually a public hearing. But this is not meant to be an organized, precise answer. This is meant to be what is your philosophy, what are your feelings on different things. Can you hear okay, Ann? Ann? I can, thank you. Okay, yes, back. I can, Good. thanks. So, um, good evening. Um, so, over the past several months, um, Jane and I have been working with the DPW supervisors to review the current select board um, DPW policies and take a hard look at them and see what has to be updated to current procedures that we're, we're following um, current, you know, um, current day um, to a current day policy. And um, so we went through and made our edits, um, listened to the supervisor, made uh, suggestions, and um, that ran it by um, town council. And what you have in your packets, I believe, tonight is um, uh, recommendations from the from town council about what they feel, um, you know, some s suggested edits yep. as far as, uh, and also as far as um, which one of the policies shouldn't possibly be select board jurisdiction versus maybe reduced down to more of a public works departmental policy. Um, so what you have there in your packet from town council are just the policies that um, Town Council feels would definitely be just um, select board jurisdiction. And then I'm going to also go over to some of the other um, new language that we want to propose um, to policy um, this, that reflects current practices we've been following, but that just has never been formally approved. Um, so with that, I guess I can start. And, um, feel free if you have any questions to stop yep. at any point. Um, so the first um, point that we went through and any reference to um, what a select one was changed to select board. Very simple one. Um, the next one is um, Article 4.6, um, Solid Waste Recycling, Collection and Disposal Rules and Regulations. So the specific, specific proposal would update language to reflect the town's current solid waste and recycling regulations. Um, just to bring it up, up to what JRM's current contract calls for as far as what's accepted in trash recycling, um, what is not accepted anymore, and so forth with the changing times. Um, also included in this was additional language that um, preventing recyclable items, household rubbish, leaf bags, or bulk waste from being placed at the curb prior to 5 o'clock p.m. on the day prior to the regularly scheduled collection. Um, this was changed because the current regulation is out of date, as I said, with town's current um, policy, and um, there were never any time restrictions um, on when someone could place something out of the curb. You know, nothing prohibiting them from placing it a couple days out ahead of time. So we put in uh, five o'clock on the day before. Um, okay. This is it. So the next um, article is um, 4.71, uh, Sewer Connection Permit Program, um, the subsection Purpose and Authority. Um, the specific proposal would insert language pertaining to the purpose and authority of the Sewer Connection Permit Program and how the program relates to both sanitary and storm sewer applications. Um, this was changed um, as the new language will support practices currently being enacted and include um, the following additions. Um, so the use of all public sewers in the town shall be controlled by the Department of Public Works. Um, any person wanting to connect to the sewer system shall abide by the regulation found within this article. All sewer laterals between the main and the street in the building or facility being served is the responsibility of the property owner. Um, any and all connections to the sound, town sewer system shall be performed by a licensed drain layer as approved by the town. 
and any new connections to the town sewer system shall be subject to the availability of capacity as determined by the town. Excuse me, Chris, when you use the words the town, mm -hmm. who is that in this instance? Um, as availability of capacity, that would be a determination by the town engineer. Mm -hmm you know, as far as whether the system could handle what the flows were going to be. So the appropriate expert within DPW? Exactly. Whether it's the DPW director or a town engineer. Or and some of this stuff actually lives with the selectmen at this time. Is that correct? Which is, you know, he is part right. Yeah, I think it's from the old board of, board of public works. Yeah, board of public survey or works or something. What was, the, what was the elected board before the charter? Actually, it was both. Uh, report of public works. They took over the okay. uh, uh, survey. Uh, 1922, the board of public works was created. Next year, we have is that the last time we updated this? <laughs> well, I, I gotta tell you that this looks like the, when I looked at this, it struck me that the you know when that elected body went away, mm -hmm. right. it was kind of like, well, we can't let this really get away from an elected body because right. it was always with an elected body. When in fact, I mean, the idea of, of us being involved in some of this stuff that I saw in here is. Mm -hmm. Crazy. <laughs> uh, you, you need the professionals that do it, right. doing it, and making those decisions. Right. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of the, my take on a lot of this stuff that mm -hmm. you're talking about is let's get it where it belongs. That's, I think, town council is looking at to kind of practical, be, be separate practical. what you yeah. and, and much faster for the resident or the applicant. Yes. Right. Set to move on. Um, the next article is 4.9 water conservation program. So this specific this proposal would replace a section in its entirety to simply reflect MWRA's mandated water conservation regulations. So since this article was last revised, um, Reading began receiving its water from MWRA and is therefore now obligated to comply with the um, um, MWRA water conservation um, standards. And that's part of our contract, right, Chris? Yeah. I mean, that's the deal. Right. Um, so the next one, um, this is new language for, um, you know, uh, procedures that have been ongoing uh, currently, just never approved by anyone. Um, street opening permit policy, street opening moratorium. Um, so a specific proposal would insert language to regulate all non-emergency street openings within the town of Reading occurring within five years of resurfacing the street. Um, why do we need a change here? Well, the town of Reading currently has no approved policy regulating street openings on newly resurfaced streets. Um, so basically, we can repave a road, and then some. You know, we can have a resident on the street come and say they want to, you know, have a new gas service put in or um, replace this sewer line or something like that. And now the street has got a, a brand new road has got another patch in it. Um, so some of the highlights of the new policy um, would include um, all non-emergency excavation as determined by the Director of Public Works shall be prohibited in a newly paved roadway for a period of five years unless authorized by the select board. If the select board authorized the excavation, the applicant shall be required to resurface the road curb to curb or edge of pavement to edge of pavement for at least 10 feet beyond the limits of the excavation. Um, when there's two or more um, excavations that occur within 30 feet of each other, um, required paving would be for the required distance necessary to cover both, just so you don't have a right, series of patches in the road. Um, and all work shall be performed according to the town of Reading standards and be approved by the Director of Public Works. Now, street, the street opening moratorium, this is actually very common in other communities. And um, in fact, as an example, we actually have um, one instance right now where a resident on a newly paved street within the past, um, like a year ago, um, is requesting to perform a, a, a open up the street to have a new um, gas service put in. And so this 
determination on this policy is going to have um, a great effect on you know their decision that they make so and there is a way if somebody somebody doesn't necessarily have to wait five years to change their gas service but there's a cost of doing business mm -hmm. and there's a right. mechanism that you know it's not there's a clear mechanism right the way you've made these changes as to how it happens right yeah uh, speaking to some of my peers um, some have gone so far as to propose and have passed uh, bylaws um, that will put more teeth into the uh, enforcement action for instance of a national grid coming in and doing a sloppy job right. on a newly paved road um, I think that's a bit extreme I, I don't think it's been around enough to know how it's worked but the aggravation level in some communities for paving a road and then having it ripped up in a year or two by the gas company and repaved in an obviously shoddy way or any other vendor um, is, yeah, is and, and probably I, some other we, we've seen where they it's not they're doing one house yeah but they tear up blocks and, and these guys do a great job communicating with most of the vendors well in advance they know our paving schedule they canvass the houses in advance as best they can you can't foresee everything uh, but other communities have not had the good relationship I'd say and, and much more chaotic results on right. the roads got it um, uh, question um, so this uh, what you're presenting here is not in the packet is that correct or am I missing it I'm not sure this the well, PowerPoint was not enough yeah this is the, this is not right this but, is but not a lot of the a lot of the changes are in here and I couldn't find this yeah this this is not in the um, in the packet per se I don't I don't believe the only thing in the items in the packet are the policies that the um, that exist. the town that, right. well, this is the well, change well, this well, is a new well the town right. council yeah I think that's why I wasn't in there either. Well, right now it's just it's uh, deleted for for article 4134 is seems to be deleted as far yeah, there as was, there was, just there crossed was, out there was one moved. no there was one section the town council deleted they broke it up into sections and they okay. deleted others so. okay all right um this isn't a change this yeah. is a, this, this is, is a new, new one, one. Yeah. yeah and and it really is important as as chris said because we get approached yeah yeah days after a road is done yeah you know frequently we can get you the full text you know as far as sure yeah it does say um 413 street opening permit policy yeah. um mm -hmm. here and it's just crossed out so i assume you're replacing this into this um well I, th I think what you're looking at what town council had there is they were yeah. looking at another section and instead of they we had, we had the um, all the entire document in one right. one document, and they broke it up into individual documents. And so instead of deleting the bottom portion, I think they they just kept it in there. And, um, and what's important is what we have. I think you know, what we, we have, have in front of us. Yeah, yeah, what we have in front of us yeah, it's is kind of the it's the rough draft of where it's yeah. going. What tonight's <laughs> really about is start the conversation. Oh, no, yeah. You know, so could you guys mark a, a request related to that too? So. I'm following in complete agreement. What might be helpful, and just as we do these things, especially when there's massive crossout, yeah. is to provide the crossout version and a clean version. And, so, and sometimes what we do is what I like to call a translation guide to explain this section is now right. moved to there or there. Mm -hmm. As we get closer to you making decisions, would have that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, it was very hard to preview yeah. this. When we did zoning, that's what we did. Right. Yeah. And and as right. you got closer to, you know, showtime as what exactly. it really was going to be, then it, the clarity came up. Right. Um, this takes us in a, in a great general direction, though, I think. Yeah. So we'll stop it. I, at least, unless there's another question, we'll let you keep rolling. Okay. So the next one is um, 413.6, um, another street opening permit policy. This is driveway rules and regulations, which you've been familiar with in the past, yes. um, that you've seen some of them. Um, these are, again, policies and procedures that have been enacted over the years, just have never actually been formally approved. Um, so this would insert language to regulate driveway curb cuts within the town of Reading. Um, 
as I said, the Reading currently has no approved policy to reflect current practices regarding the regulation of driveway curb cuts from the town. Um, so highlights of the driveway regulations include um, following. So driveway shall not exceed 24 feet in width. Um, two driveways may be allowed on a single lot if there is at least 100, 125 feet between openings, and this includes all circular driveways. Um, driveways that would be at least 50 feet from the nearest cross street. Um, the grade of the driveway shall not exceed 10% plus or minus for the first 20 feet into the lot. And this is for all driveways that are pitched towards the road. This is to prevent excess runoff from going into the travelway. Right. Um, all proposed driveways must be submitted to DPW for approval, and the applicant may appeal to the select board if the permit is denied by DPW. Okay. Chris, the, the, um, the section that got crossed out um, looks like it was only fees. <laughs> And nothing to do with kind of the, the content. Is there you know where the fees? Yeah, yeah, I do. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Here are the driveway rules and regulations. Oh, okay. So you can see um, you know, just what all the regulations are. Um, is there so Okay, so I think what happened was we had sent everything to town council. He didn't have a chance to review all of them, so mm -hmm. what he submitted in the packet were things that he had a he chance to review. Got it. Um, so there's more to come. But, but you're catching us up on all of it. Right, right. you're yeah. right. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. Yeah. And, so they don't and, match. And we're, not, don't, we're and not supposed to be f focusing too much on every single yeah, so detail. Generally, right. Right. You know, so things that we, we, we took out, which you'll see at the end, and a few yeah. that we, we had to add because it was our common practice, but we, yeah. we just had, didn't have it documented and things that got carried over from the public think that works that need to be updated. If we get, I think we got to be careful. The stuff that we have in our packet is what he's already looked at, yeah. done some things about, but what we're getting is kind of the whole overview. High, high level yeah. overview, uh, yeah. yeah. The, the, yeah. the, the 30,000 yeah. feet. The standard yeah. board. We're, yeah. This, we're two or three meetings we're gonna a have public few hearing. Meetings. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Okay, sorry. Okay, no problem. Okay, so any more questions on the driveway regulations? No. Nope. Okay. Not for me. Anybody else? Ann, are you good? I'm good, thank you. Sure. So the next one we have here is, this is again another um, more new language. Um, this is the public shade tree policy. And these are all um, practices and procedures that have been followed that just has never been a formal um, approval done. Um, on these on this uh, policy so um, some of the highlights of the shade tree policy would include um, public shade tree would be defined per Mass General Law chapter 87 section 1 as all trees within a public way or on the boundaries thereof tree warden is defined to be the sole individual within the town for making all decisions regarding public shade trees um, no individual other than the tree warden shall be permitted to trim or remove public shade trees without written permission from the tree warden. Um, if a request is made to remove a public shade tree and the tree warden determines the tree to be healthy, um, the tree warden shall hold a public hearing on the removal of the tree. 
um, if the request is denied, the property owner requesting the hearing may appeal to the select board. Um, if the select board at the public meeting determines that the tree should be removed, the full cost of removal shall be borne by the property owner, including but not limited to police details and restitution. Um, this one part of it right here is obviously something that you'll want to have discussion on because, you know, obviously there have been um, circumstances in the past that um, you've ruled differently mm -hmm. um, on, on situations like that. We've been inconsistent. I got it. <laughs> um, so restitution, um, whether someone takes down a tree, you know, illegally, or um, you know, if the if the town tree is just taken taken down and the board determines that restitution shall be paid, um, the way it is currently calculated is, for example, a 30-inch diameter tree could be thought of as 15 two-inch trees. And currently, the price per tree um, that the town would have to pay is $300 a tree. So for 15 trees, a 30-inch tree would be a total restitution of $4,500. Um, any unauthorized tree planting on town property shall be subject to removal by the tree warden. Um, all new tree plantings within the town shall have species and location determined by the tree warden. You know, this is especially, um, you see this um, with like new subdivisions, you know, that the tree warden will want to determine all the new species of the trees going right. in the subdivision. Um, you know, and then penalties shall be imposed to both property owners and contractors for unauthorized removal of town shade trees. And then also, um, we've established construction standards when working near town shade trees, so um, contractors don't dig too cro close to a tree into the root zone, um, don't park their vehicles on top of the root zone of the tree because it compresses the soil and causes a hazardous situation for the tree, et cetera. So, Chris, is there any provision for damage? To a, a public shade tree? Yes, there is. Um, I can actually pull this up. Let's see. We have. Um, So we have a section here, penalties for injuring, injury, 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 for injuring town shade trees. Um, Mass General Law Chapter 87, Section 11, um, you know, talks about whoever willfully, maliciously, or wrongfully destroys or injures a tree, shrub, or growth, um, standing for any, shall be punished by imprisonment for not more than six months or by a fine of not more than $500. That's Mass General, that's Mass General, Mass General Law. <laughs> um, In addition to the five hundred dollars, <laughs> after they get out of prison, right? And the stocks are built from the tree. That from the tree. <laughs> but um, it all, un unauthorized trimming of a tree shall not um, shall warrant up to a five hundred dollar penalty per tree, um, dependent upon the damage performed as determined by the tree warden. Um, then. Dealing with like contractors and penalties, um, right? We have in here, um, and this is apparently pretty standard in other communities, I believe. Unauthorized removal of a tree by a contractor, first offense could be a thousand dollars, second offense twenty five hundred, third offense five thousand, and possibly um, being banned for working in the town for up to a certain number of years. Um, so, yep. just as a, a curious question, yeah. As you went through the definitions of what a public shade tree was, it, so I'm guessing if it's on the tree lawn of your property, mm -hmm. that's you know, that would be a public shade Correct. tree. But um, and of course, if it's in a public park, and you know, I mean, there's uh, obvious places. Mm -hmm. There was a line in there that said something to the effect, like if it was next to it. So you got a tree lawn in your front yard, and it's whatever it is, I you know. 12 feet, I, it, it's a number. Mm -hmm. that, it varies, the yeah, it, I know it varies, so it's it's 10 feet and then there's a tree that 
is sitting three feet away. Now, is that adjacent to it, or is so? I, I'm just wondering, is because I think people don't really know when they're supposed to call somebody. To be honest, with you. I mean, I I think that it would be good as you guys process this mm -hmm. to get some clarity so that when people want to want to do something with their tree. You know, I mean, if I have a tree in my front yard that's grown into the wires, you know, you know something bad's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But it's sitting in the middle of my yard. Can I do something about it or can I, is the question. And I think a lot of people have that question. So as you start to, I'm just giving you a suggestion. As you craft this, yeah. what I saw still left me wondering and I think it would leave other people wondering when it's time to call mm -hmm. when you don't get yourself in trouble by trimming what you think is your own tree well, what we usually tell residents is if you have any doubt you know just just call us up and the tree warden will come out and make a determination on whether it's a public shade tree or um, private you know he'll be he's glad to come out and take a look at it yeah I think it's just important as you recraft yeah. these things for simplicity's sake mm -hmm. You know, and it, it's going to get some press, and there'll be a public hearing. Mm -hmm. Let's keep it as clear, as easy to follow as Def possible. Definitely. So. Yep. Yeah. I'll sit on this one. Yep. Yes. Okay. So the next article is addressing standards and regulations. Um, so uh, Public Works is responsible for issuing all um, house numbering and addressing in the town. Um, so the town currently has no approved policy um, to reflect current addressing standards, with, in standards which were based on the policy of the former Board of Public Works. Um, so I'll just go through here and uh, briefly some of the um, some of the um, highlights of these standards and procedures include that the town engineer is the sole agent of the town of Reading authorized to assign and modify addresses. Um, when naming roads, you know, some obvious things, no two roads shall be given the same name or have similar sounding names, um, obviously for emergency purposes. I know we have a couple streets in town that have very similar names, right. you know, like a Sanborn Lane, Sanborn Street. Um, so we try to avoid that when possible. Um, in residential areas, numbers shall be assigned every 35 feet along both sides of the center line of the road. In the right out here in the downtown business district, numbers shall be assigned every 12 feet. Um, so even numbers appear on the left um, side of the road, odd numbers appear on the right, and um, the low numbers shall originate from the intersection closest to the center of town as determined by the town engineer. Um, now the number assigned to each structure shall be the numbered interval falling closest to the front door or the driveway of said structure if the front door cannot be seen from the main road. So typically what we do is we have the applicant, if they're putting up a new house um, or something like that, they will submit to engineering a plan of their house and with the street line on it and showing where the front door is and then we overlay that under our plans that have the grid for the street for the house numbering intervals and then just see where the front door, which interval the front door falls within. Um, we do that for all new subdivisions, you know, we do a new layout of house numbering for each subdivision right. and um, so forth. Um, accessory apartments um, shall be assigned the address of the main structure followed by a secondary location indicator of um, apartment A. So um, you have like an in-law apartment or something that you put up on your property. Um, it would have the same address as, you know, you know, the main structure, but it would be given that plus an apartment A or whatever designation. Um, Multi-level apartment or condominium buildings um, shall be assigned a building address, um, but then have apartment numbers or unit numbers for condominiums um, to follow. Um, and then the first floor will be given designations of 1001, 1002, et cetera. Second floor will be 2001 and so forth, um, like that. So that's it on, on 
the addressing standards. Yep. Do you have any questions? Or? So we will not have a P A R K A road that won't. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Although we do. <laughs> um, so appeals. Um, and I know town council had some a lot of comments on this section. Um, so this is just updating the language to reflect current procedures, um, why it was changed. The current language is not representative of current procedures and the appeal process of Article 4. Um, the current language had appeals going first to the town manager and then to the board, um, whereas current procedure is um, appeals would just go straight to the board to be heard. So. Um, language is updated in that, and as I said, town council had some other suggestions um, that you see in your packets there for appeals. Uh, this traffic signage or mechanism is prohibited. This is um, new language that um, we wanted to put in here. Um, this goes along the same guidelines of current procedures and practices that we're currently enacting, but nothing formal had ever been approved. Um, so the town does not currently have any approved policy prohibiting certain types of traffic signage or mechanisms which have the potential to either not perform as intended or have the potential to impair public safety as determined by both the police, police uh, chief of police and or director of public works. So um, this would more involve like signs um, that we've talked about um, at PTTF with the police chief and um, you know, public safety and so forth, um, involving like um, animal crossing signs. Um, you know, I know they're up in town, but um, you know, the from a from a safety perspective, you know, they just they just don't all you know they just don't work. I mean, the animal the animals can't reach. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like they don't know they're supposed to be there. <laughs> Um, it's an educational opportunity. <laughs> um, for um, what's that? Mirrors. Yeah, and the uh, and the mech and the mechanisms would be more in the in the like um, the mirrors that you see sometimes on roads. Um, yeah. They're just not safe. You know, it's, it become a mirror would become a liability for the town. You know, if, if there were anything. Well, to people put them there because yeah. they can't. Right. They're looking for a way to solve their own problem. Right. Uh, is there a way for people to make that type of a request? Let's say it's uh, heavily populated with children area. Is there, I know it's not here, but is there a process that people can follow? Yeah, yeah. They, um, residents can make a request through, um, through Public Works and then um, that request then we would discuss at our monthly PTTF meetings. PTTF, yeah, okay. um, when that's um, made up of the uh, you know police, um, town manager, at DPW. Um, They've been visiting us a lot lately. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then the last um, article is um, consideration of multi-way stop intersections. Um, the way the current language was written, um, in order to determine. Um, whether or not a multi-way stop is warranted. Um, an engineering study has to be done to see if it meets the warrants. And the way the language was currently, it had us um, determining whether um, the, what, it, the intersection was warranted. And if it was warranted, then we did the traffic study. So it was like, had, had the order reversed. Right. <laughs> so, um, so that was that. And then the last three here that you will see are sections that um, we've removed from Article 4 DPW. Um, this first section here um, referred to rules and regulations relating to parks, playgrounds, or recreation areas. Um, recreation used, used to be formally a division of public works, um, including all the rules and regulations related. Um, so you're just taking it away. Just taking it away and moving it to Article Yeah, because they were in here with yeah. all new rules, right. all new set of rules right. here a couple months ago. Right. Um, article, the old Article 415, use, operation, and maintenance of the common. Um, this again was moved to Article 5, community services, because um, 
the, U, the use and operation of the town common is not under the purview of the Department of Public Works, but rather historical and community services. So while maintenance of the common is responsibility of public works, um, that language was never mentioned in the section. So the entire section was just um, is going to be moved to Article 5. <coughs> Got it. And then this last, the last slide here, um, the old Article 416 um, policy is establishing aquifer protection district, um, infiltration system design guidelines. This section was deleted in its entirety from the, um, the select board policies as it's currently a bylaw. Okay. Um, so uh, no sense in duplicating that. So that's my last slide, so. Awesome. Any questions for Chris uh, or Jane? It, sort of for Chris and Jane and for Bob. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, at some point, since the definitions change regularly and we have questions about is it a tree, is it public shade, is it you know, the town common, who do I talk to? Wouldn't it be great to have a glossary and have it up on the website? So when someone has a question, they know where to look or who to, who to talk to. I also save a lot of time at town hall mm -hmm. as people kind of come in with questions. And it just strikes me as we're defining language, it's a great opportunity to build that glossary. I know a lot of departments currently on the website, they have like a Q&A section on the website that have a lot of, you know, good well, questions. Fre frequently on. asked yeah. questions. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and maybe, maybe there's a, like a, <coughs> pardon me, a tree that would show mm -hmm. you kind of where to look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, since, uh, to that point, since we're in the process, might as well keep it as user-friendly as possible. It'll, it'll stop you guys from, you know, being tortured, mm -hmm. you know, because that's kind of what ends up happening. And then people don't mean to do it, they just don't know where else to go. Right. Know yeah. where it is. Andy, you had, you had some questions yeah, or comments? Um, a couple things. Um, we had, in, in the first part, in the packet, the first page, on this topic was page 21 um, and it starts with a letter a draft letter dear board members I, I, I forget who that was from that was from town council that was from town council so <clears throat> it there seems to be a larger question here um, I agree that we, we need to uh, have professionals obviously involved in DPW decision making, I think we already do. Um, but the the general bylaw says the select board acting through the town manager shall be responsible for the establishment of policies and priorities to govern the operation of the DPW. Um, and then it says we may adopt rules, etc. So that seems pretty clear that. Um, we are responsible for establishing the policies and priorities that govern the DPW. Um, yeah. And then town council seems to argue that we let some of that go. Town council thinks you ought to take some serious thought to that <clears throat> because it's more responsibility than you might be comfortable having and that the bylaw should be changed. So that's why this is a complex right so so before, because I I would be reluctant to, to do to give up some responsibility that is uh, given to us by the by a bylaw um, before the bylaws changed yeah right right okay yeah, so and I think so, that's part of this discussion okay absolutely um, yeah, this is I, I have the yeah. sense this is going to that, go that's helpful a yeah, long time helpful. Yeah, I think it's yeah, gonna, I yeah. think it's going to well, be a it's series la it's lasted 25 or 30 years yeah. without much looking at it. so uh, it's because it makes people's hair hurt <laughs> well, in the charter yeah. process the old Board of Public Works was in the charter and it was useless there but people just wouldn't let it go um, and the charter changed it. It's now time to start working on internal policies. So, so my question then, my, sort of another um, forest for the trees, if you uh, would forgive me, um, is that our policy was last, this policy of ours was last revised in 2005, I think. Okay. Something like that. And it probably was a very tiny section, just so you're clear, it wasn't a okay. full revision. Okay. Right. So, so I guess, I'd like to know what the timeline or a guess for the timeline would be for we can't have a policy that's 
from 2005 when things have clearly changed so much. Um, so either we change the bylaw and go ahead and do this, and how quickly can that be done, or we quickly update our, our policy so it matches what you, you folks are, are doing. Um, so what's your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on that? I think that's that? the exact reason for this discussion and why I, at the beginning I said it was don't pin it down too much as scientific and very loose. Right. The board has to decide um, what path are they most comfortable going forward. And you've just made a statement which makes sense that really until the bylaw changes, I wouldn't want to do X, Y, Z. And I, and I understand that. That's the kind of feedback that's helpful. Um, how quickly could the bylaws be changed? Um, in theory, this November, but in practice, that's too soon. Um, so possibly April, and I'm not sure if even that works. Um, I think in order, for, it's, it's kind of a chicken and an egg question. Yeah. Until you know what the end product wants to look like, yeah. you're not sure what rules and regulations to change that would prevent that from happening, I think. So you wouldn't necessarily want to change the bylaw until you know how you want the policies, rules, and regulations to look, because you want to and to be split up, because you don't want to have to go back and change the bylaw again. Sure, I guess. Yeah, that's why this is this is complex, actually. But I think this kind of modeling that you're doing for us is going to help us yeah. in the discussion over the next several months. Yeah, because we don't have to think it up. I mean, there's some. Yeah. It's kind of like what Victor says, you know. Tell me what you're interested in, and I'll yeah. I'll, I'll build something you right. look at, and then we've got a framework. I mean, you know, we, we do have a limited amount of time if we actually want to get something done. You know, yeah. the terms only run three years. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so you know, I I do think that this. I think I personally think this is really helpful. I, you know, I, I do too. Yeah. I do too, and I think maybe when the full board is present we could have a quick discussion about whether we want to shoot for the moon, so to speak, and get the bylaw changed. As Wouldn't we want the model, though, that we, to Bob's point, it, the processing that they've done gives us the model, and we yeah. poke and go, well, yeah, but how about this, fix that a little bit, and there's kind of this back and forth that goes on, and then when you get there and it's like, yeah, this looks pretty good. Yeah. Now, I get it, you gotta change the bylaw, but yeah. now you're changing it to something that actually is gonna support what you want. Right. You know, and it, it is a chicken and an egg story, but yeah. I think you kinda gotta do this part first to get the bylaw right, otherwise you're gonna keep changing the bylaw, yeah. and that can only happen, you know, twice a year. So, yeah. You know. And I think that in, I'm trying to find the page that it's on. At the end of this, town council made a great, uh, or somebody made a great chart um, that goes down each section and recommends whether it be under the select board yep. or uh, the DPW. And I, and so if the board could focus, if we could focus our discussions on that high level yeah. uh, picture, yeah. and then. Um, Then the ones that we still want to own, I would be in favor of moving forward as quickly as possible with the DPW to get them in to update our policy so it's not uh, 13 years old anymore and reflects what you you know your your input. Um, mm -hmm. So that I think that would be our recommendation. Okay. Look at the overall picture of what town council recommends we keep and we give away, and then for what we the board wants to keep, the sections that we want to keep, get them updated in the policy as soon as possible so the public knows what's expected. Mm -hmm. and, and it may be that um, some of the missing areas that you've highlighted here may end up being highest priority. In other words, they're they're pretty they're more straightforward. We can have a discussion. It's putting in policies and procedures that don't exist today. Mm -hmm. Maybe those are faster ones to, to yep. accomplish. What you can get rid of it could happen faster than what you want to hang on to. So, and how about you? You got anything you're interested in uh, putting on the table here? Um, not at this time, thank you. Okay, good. Um, so, um. Thank you for this part. I know you've got more. 
Um, but I'm old and I got to take a minute. <laughs> so this seems like a natural place to break. Um, it's, we're running about 15 minutes ahead of schedule, which is very good. So we're going to take five and uh, reconvene if everybody's Thanks. okay. Thanks very much for the presentation. Thank you.
and you're not back yet. It's okay. You will be. You know you deep will be. Deep within the, back. the spaceship. Doesn't that look like a spaceship? Where? Oh yeah, a little. Yeah. Yeah. And from space. What are you yeah. thinking about, Andy? No, no, <laughs> <laughs> thinking about launching air one. <laughs> no. So we'll give it a second. So just in general, though, um, we're going to follow the same format. Jane, have you given us some information to work with on these next two topics? Yeah, it's just an overview. Yeah, it's an overview, right? Yeah. yeah. Is Caitlin there by chance? Yes. 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 Uh, Caitlin, I was just wondering if you wanted me to come by sometime this week to sign the paperwork that you had everyone else sign, or if it's not necessary because you had a quorum. Yeah, not not necessary, Ann, but you're obviously welcome. Okay, very good, thanks. I think we need, always need just the three, yeah. right? Documents that need all some five. Some of them need four, and yeah. some of them need five. Ann, are you ready to go again? I am, yeah. Good. Okay, Jane, the floor is yours. Okay. Um, so I was asked to just kind of give an overview of the um, sprinkler meters because um, in case you're considering doing the, the second meters in town. Um, so originally, huh, sorry, um, <laughs> originally um, it was adopted in 1992. There was a moratorium in 1994 and that moratorium had an annual review. Um, I found a letter that was sent out to residents in uh, 1999 saying that whatever meters they had would be billed at the same rate as the primary, including the SOAR. And then there was a re revision to the moratorium that had no, with no annual review. So that's where we've been with that. So a sprinkle meter is a secondary meter that measures consumption of water um, that's used primarily outside the house. We currently have 138 sprinkler meters in town. Um, I kind of look through the MWRA communities and 60% of them allow them. And then I did a quick survey of our peer communities and for the responses that I got back, 71% of our peer communities allow them. 71% who are also MWRA because I wanted to make sure that that matched up. Um, there was one community that, and I had looked into this initially saying, you know, is there any regulations with it? And one community thought that there was, they had the sprinkler meters and then they um, put a moratorium on it because they were, they thought there was regulation. So we looked deeper into it. There are no regulations for MWRA or DEP banning them. Um, the one thing is they do have this guideline of 65 gallons per capita per day um, for both inside and outside use. Um, Reading is at 44. So that's the only thing that we would sort of, you know, have to keep an eye on. There are costs if we decide to do that. Of course, um, the resident has always picked up a plumbing permit cost. They would assume the costs associated with the plumbing. Um, th there's a backflow preventer that is required. The cost currently of a meter is about $300, um, and for a transponder, which they would also need, is about $120. Um, and you know, we're recommending that they they cover the cost of the installation of the meter by town personnel. Um, and if there's any maintenance for of the meter or transponder, that they would pick that up. Now, that's not if the thing is malfunctioning. We we replace that. But we have sometimes residents that do work on their house or um, you know inside or outside work. They damage the meter. They damage transponders. We do charge back for that. So that same would go whether it's a primary or secondary meter. The resident would have to have the backflow preventer tested annually. That's a regulation. And there's additional costs for billing because it would have to be a separate bill because each um, uh, sprinkler meter has their own charge code. So considering conservation, it does go against conservation efforts unless that second meter is charged at a higher rate. Um, and 
we have a lot of people that um, do rain barrels and do an awful lot of conservation within town and the way it would be set up is that almost negate their savings because they would have increased soar, soar rates. Um, but the water rate structure that I saw when I did either um, the survey or just uh, in general in reading um, was that most communities that have the second meters have a higher rate for the second meters or they have a tiered rate um, in the second uh, the second meter, the sprinkler meter, is a higher rate. And generally speaking, they don't have abatements for sprinkler meters because those, if anything, is where you're going to get a lot of your problems. And so they don't do the abatements. So before you leave that slide, yeah. could you go back to that one for a second? Okay. So when you have a higher rate for the secondary meter or tiered charges, mm -hmm. That secondary meter doesn't have a sewer charge, but it has a substantially higher water charge. Correct. Because at a certain point, uh, particularly when you think about the MWRA connection, we're paying off. You know, part of what we're doing is paying is paying off our obligations to right. them. Besides the rates, right? Right. Um, so. So it may not be all it's cracked up to be, I guess is what I'm saying, because you, it sounds like most everybody has a secondary pricing structure yes. or a secondary. Yeah. Okay, almost, got it. Almost everybody did. Yeah. Yeah. It actually makes sense if you back away from it. It's, mm -hmm. You know, it sounds good in theory. Yeah. Right. Until you start digging in. Go ahead. Um, so the impact on the SOAR rates, our SOAR rates uh, you know, aren't going to change. Um, they, they are uh, meted back to the MWRA system, so it is what it is. It's not going to change if we have uh, secondary uh, second meters in town. Um, but the water consumption at home establishes, um, is a way for us to establish SOAR usage. You know, it's 100% of that. So we're going to be losing SOAR revenue. So somehow or another, we have to either raise rates to cover that loss or that's the only thing I can think of because we have a set charge. Yeah, we have a certain amount of yeah. money we've got to satisfy. Yeah. yeah so sewer rates in the front paragraph there is really what the MWRA charges Reading. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And then Reading has to make up some revenue loss to Deficit, customers yeah. in order to pay the MWRA. Got it. So Jane, um, on that first bullet, the do they meter sewer flows mm -hmm. from Reading? And that's they, they, and they charge us based on that. Yeah. And they come back to us at the end of every year and redefine those, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of tied to actual data. Yeah. Correct. Yep. Um, we do not want to check those meters. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's interesting. So residents that do not install second meters, of course, will pay a higher share of that increase for the sewer because if I'm um, if I'm, I don't have a second meter, but I'm still watering my lawn or filling my pool, you know, my soar rate now has gone up, and I'm paying even that that much more. So it's sort of. Yep. That's it. Just the okay. Questions? questions. Andy, anything for uh, Jane on this topic? No, it was a good good presentation. The pros and cons. Um, Do we have? Will we get this? I mean, would you find it valuable to have a copy of this to answer yeah, constituent questions? Yeah, we can send it out and send it to him. Uh, of the of Jane's presentation. presentation. It's in the, it's in, it's in the, we have it. Okay, yeah. I'm not, my okay. computer's not on and I, you know. Oh. Yeah, um, yeah, I read it beforehand. I thought it was a, you know, you covered all the points. Um, I am, at this point, not inclined to a second Water meter based on what I, what you've presented, um, but you know I I'm sure the board may. This is not meant as a definitive. No, discussion. we're not. This is no. we're look, not looking to vote tonight. We're looking for information. Um, Mark, how about you? Um, just a, a quick question. You mentioned the. 2012 Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs Water Resources Commission in conjunction with the Mass DEP released updated water conservation standards. Um, so that's seven or eight years ago now. I'm just wondering if those uh, guidance toward consumption are likely to go down further. Uh, the 65 
yeah. established in 2012. Yes. I don't know if they've updated it, but I would imagine at some point That's they're going to look current. at it. That's their current. The 65? Yeah, it's current, but it was established in 2012. Oh, oh yeah. I would imagine that they're trying to encourage more conservation as time goes on. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised at all if that number at oh, some point go soon correct. goes down. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, and that would concern, I think that that's the right guidance is that we should be mm -hmm. conserving and I would be very hesitant to offer an opportunity to make it easier to go above. Ann, anything on your mind? Uh, no, we can move on. Okay. Bill, you had a question. Yeah, uh, just an observation. Uh, I think water is a privilege that most people don't understand. Uh, I've had the displeasure of being without water for a few days. Uh, when they mix the water and the sewer line together, wheels feel triply living. I gotta tell you, it's not very pleasant. Uh, I feel if people want the water, they will let them pay for it. They want to waste their water that way, so be it. Okay. And I'm sure if, if we get to a place with a public hearing, you know, you'll be here to talk about that. So, great. Okay. Well, if we don't, if there's no more questions about the, the, the second meter, looks like we're going to be at waste zero recycling. Right? Okay. So Waste Zero actually approached us um, a year or so ago. It's a company that works with municipalities to increase their recycling. We have an awful lot of recycling efforts in town, but this was a unique one. Um, so they um, look to uh, recycle primarily textiles. And so the, the company that they work with is Simple Recycling. Um, that's who they um, would have in town. Those were the trucks. Um, the the thing that the, that they're offering us, it's free to the town. There's no obligation for any resident to um, participate or not. But it's it's easy. Um, it's um, there's some benefit benefit to the town. It's not a huge benefit, but it saves in tonnage. So our current tonnage is sixty eight dollars and thirty five cents to Covienta. And um, so we, whatever tonnage we don't send there, we get a benefit of, and then also um, they pay us $20 per ton for textiles. So, I don't know why that value wasn't coming up. Um, but anyway, that's, there's about, um, I think it's 15 million tons is um, this value over here. Um, of textiles that are um, discarded, let's say, in the U.S. And that makes up, I think, a 6%. But in Massachusetts, we have 11% um, of te textiles that are discarded. Um, so their target is not this 2 to 3% because those are recovered. Those go to the um, drop boxes and to you know the various goodwills and whatnot. But they're looking to recover this other larger piece of the pie here that um, you know is. So people are throwing away more. They are throwing more away. clothes than giving them away. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Wow, that's it. I wouldn't have thought that. Yeah, I was surprised by that. But it's just the convenience, I think, and people just, you know, and the other thing is when we used to do a lot of the recycling, we'd tell, Goodwill would take things and they say it doesn't matter if it was ripped, it doesn't, because they right. fix it and whatnot, but people look at something and ripped and they just throw it out, you know, but right. there's a lot of agencies that will take it. Um, so right now we have, um, according to DEP, 8,200, 8,700 households. So based on that, they assume about 10 pounds a year of textiles roughly are thrown out. So that would generate, you know, 82,000 pounds, 41 tons. That's where we would get the $820. But we also save in the tonnage to Covanta. So it's not a huge thing. It's $3,600, 22 roughly, let's say, a year. Um, but it's just one more avenue to recycle. So are there obligations that we have to them? 
No. Um, there is a contract, but the contract just sets the revenue, so it's a penny a pound, or, you know, that type yeah. of thing. And then also that, you know, we have a right, if we have any issues with, you know, a driver or any kind of problems, we have a right to, you know, dispute and say we don't want that particular driver in town or that type of thing, but it's not a... So they actually make the rounds every week? They follow the recycling trucks every week. Wow. Yeah. Some some of the guys in the office that I work with grew up in in Boston, and they say they remember the Ragman coming around. Oh, I remember the Ragman for sure. And yeah. this is like the modern day Ragman, but they also take um, uh, jewelry, purses, hats, toys, pictures, yes. mirrors. Yeah. Well, they take stuff too. They'll take stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Dishes, yeah. pots and pans. Yeah, I'm a little leery, and I'll t show you why in a minute about the dishes and stuff. <laughs> because it's, it's going in a pink bag out right. to the curb, so you know you just you don't want things broken and this and that. So I'm sort of advertising it as textiles because that's their primary, but they will take these other things. I would just want people to be very careful about how that's put out. You know, whether they put it in a old box and then put that in the, the pink bag or yeah. something. You know just so that we don't have, you know, a mess on the side of the road. But Wrap the dishes in the clothes. Yes, yeah. So this is what, this is, wow. it's pink. It's pink, pink. You know, so you could put dishes, you could put things in here, but it might be better to actually put the stuff in the box and then to slide the box into yeah, this. Yeah, I've actually seen this in other places, yeah. Yeah. in other parts of the country. Yeah. I have seen this in California, where the yeah, bags are, are sitting everywhere. out with the, um, yeah. yeah. Um, so they really do everything. They send out the postcard. I have to get them, the, you know, addresses in town and whatnot. But they, they send out the postcard. They send out um, a brochure to every uh, resident, explaining what they take and the processes and stuff. They send out another postcard right after it starts and reminders. Um, so they'll leave behind. They take a pink bag. They'll leave behind a pink bag. Um, and so I ask them, like, you know, where do you? Because I don't want them all over town. Um, so he's, you know, he said we, we they're pretty um, uh, flexible. He said if somebody doesn't want it, you know, tied to their railing, and they say, hey, don't do it that. He goes, we'll we'll put it where they want to put it, but we'll try to tie it, you know, somewhere to replace the bag that they took. So. Um, but it's never left loose, he said, which is, so it's the pink bag, um, and, uh, you know, it's roughly, you know, 10 pounds a year for, for um, each resident, and um, the bags are recyclable. And so I'll put things like this, you know, on the website, just sort of explaining it. There's no cost to us. There is a contract, but it's about more revenue contract than anything else. Um, it is does not go after the folks who want the tax deduction. I mean, that's not who they're competing with. You know, that it's not a tax deductible donation. But you know, so they, because I was worried about it affecting other people. He goes, no, these are people that just would throw it out. You know, not not bother going to Goodwill or whatever. Um, and they will, you know, um, as An Andrew said, they'll collect more than textiles. Um, I definitely wanted it. He said they would take it in other things besides the pink bag. And I, I said, no, I want the pink bag because I don't want any confusion with JRM or anything else. So, you know, we're going to make it a requirement that it's in the pink bag. Um, and if there's any questions, they they very quickly gave you the phone number, and they seem like they any feedback I've gotten. I've talked to a lot of communities that have it; they love it. They said they're very customer focused. So, and those are some of the items that they take, in addition to the textiles. And those are the communities they're currently in, with the number of households in each community so you have seen them around. <laughs> I, I definitely have seen them. Yeah. Can you put that back from what they take? So, oh, yeah. No. <laughs> but we'll take them down the garage. I, I'll take all the back and the you want to give them. I'll recycle them and give them to the mission of these. Oh, okay. I've done about 20 in the last year. Yeah. The most expensive one, 99% of the time, it's a belt. 
we get a lot of those electronics down the garage. They don't take any electronics, though. They're not interested no, in that. No, no, just no. laptops. Just uh, yeah, more household type of things, and um, yeah, no TVs, nothing like that. Yeah. So people are paying to make that stuff go away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I so know Sonic Lodge here in town just did a you know a thing, and they they they, they get paid for it, and people were. It wasn't like you could just come and drop it off. You had to come and pay. And right. There was a line down the street. Yeah. People are looking to get rid of their stuff. I'll um, tell you, recycling, um, it's been a nightmare for these businesses. Um, so I had asked JRM. It changed quite a bit when we got the contract to start in 2016. It was just, had just beginning to be a downward market with recycling. And now, um, it was rolled into ours and at the recycle we didn't have a separate um, rate where other communities want them don't you want to own the recycling and I said I don't want recycling and because at the time they were making money on it right so the next year so we have a 10-year contract the next year it all changed and now that is they're charging 95 to 110 dollars a ton to get rid of recycling to make it go away to make it go away that's the stuff we have about 3,000 um, 3, uh, pounds a year, um, tons a year. So roughly it's about $300,000 that we kind of saved. By, saved. By, doing, by not trying to make money on it to begin with. Yeah, I think yeah. that was a really smart move. That was um, a lot. And that's, <laughs> and that's because um, the, our, many, much of our recyclables went to China. Probably, yeah. 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 So, um, I, I like this idea very much. I think it's very forward-looking, and um, I will tell you that the Massachusetts is not opening up any new landfills, um, and so um, the, the more we can do to, to reduce our our waste stream, um, the, the more. Um, fiscally responsible we're being and uh, I think this is a great idea Mark no comments thank you and hi I, I I think this seems really intriguing and I was just wondering is the select board going to would the select board be asked to vote on and um, the town of Reading entering into this contract or is this more of a an FYI Um, you could vote. Um, if you you don't have to vote, if you just indicate you like it, then we'd go forward and test okay. it out. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I kind of like it. It sounds like everybody. It doesn't sound like there's any downside to it. Right. right. Um, it raises right. awareness, which is probably the best part of it. Yeah. Um, and the town has seems to have responded very well to recycling. Yeah. I'll tell you, I think that's one of the main reasons why we don't hear a lot from JRM is because our residents do a phenomenal job. They get very clean recycling. Yeah. Um, that's huge. Yeah. That is so big compared to other communities. Yeah. So it's not costing them as much as it does everywhere else. I think people have just gotten in a habit of knowing what to do and what yeah. they're supposed to do. And it, it seems to work. Yeah. I mean, well, um, I, I think I'm, you know, does everybody, am I hearing from the four of us assembled that this is something we ought to give, give it a try? Is that what everybody's thinking? Yes. Yes. And you're yes. feeling that way? Yeah. I do. Yeah. I, and so I, I, based on that, I would say, Jane, use your judgment and, mm -hmm. you know, if, if, if you feel like this is something we should proceed with. Mm -hmm. I don't see a downside. I mean, if we save tonnage going out that we're paying for and get some small, you know, payback on right. what goes into the system and it doesn't cost us to promote it, right. um, I'm, I'm kind of wondering, you know, where's the What's catch? The catch? But, yeah, no. I, I think down the road, maybe. Yeah. 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 yeah the startup, I'm sure, is a little bumpy. Have, you know, have Ray look at the contract. Yeah, yeah it's be sure we're not got getting it. Got waiting to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. I, I don't think we got anything else. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thanks. Thanks. Look at that.
I have a couple things that I wanted to bring up, John. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. We got through the agenda in, in the lotto period. Uh, yeah. However, we do have uh, some other business to transact. Yes. We've got some minutes to deal with. Um, and future agendas. Yeah. So let's talk about future agendas. I, from in looking downstream, it appears that we've got a pretty full dance card for the 27th. Yeah, yeah. With potentially more showing up yet. Yeah, let me talk about the two potentials. Um, one, um, there's an online discussion. I saw the Lincoln patch on uh, gas leaks. And so yes. Vanessa agreed today that that would get 10 or 15 minutes of discussion at your next meeting. I don't know a lot about the topic other than what I read online. Is it more than we've done in the past? Because we've had that. I think it's quite significantly different. And I've I've asked uh, Pierre Towns today, and um, I have not found one that is doing this. I have found one that heard about it. Middleton heard about it and took no action. But I'll be in a position by here to give you a lot more information. Yeah, because um, I think we we did have an extended presentation by our own climate correct. Committee. Correct. About right. leaks and red. And, and this, as I understand it uh, from the petitioners, is for the town to pay to, uh, according to Vanessa, hire a consultant or hire an expert to assess the, con this, the condition of the situation as opposed to National Grid telling you what it is. And then I'm not sure how repairs get done differently or that, but there's well, a lot of sure, work. Make sure a better done. lawsuit. Well, no, I, I yeah, think we'll talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I, 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 I've been um, talking to um, s some of the, the petitioners over okay. the, and, um, and and I agreed to sponsor this. I don't know what that means in the context of a select board, but um, and 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 I'm sure they'll give a uh, they'll give a good presentation. But I think basically the concept is that. Um, it's uncertain if National Grid does a um, uh, super thorough job in identifying all the leaks. Um, the leaks have costs to the environment. For instance, there are uh, a big, big chunk of, or fairly sized chunk of greenhouse gas emissions, the methane, coming from these large leaks. Um, and uh, there are other uh, detriments as well to the community. So the idea would be to hire an independent consultant, um, have town meeting approve that, uh, foot the bill for that, fund that, and then um, use that independent data to uh, require or, or put pressure on the, the gas company to repair the largest leaks. Um, I hope I got that. For those listening and who are involved in this, I hope I got that somewhat correct. Okay. But I think that's the general gist. The second issue, um, which is a question to the board. Before you jump ahead, sorry, back to that <coughs> one. Would it be possible for um, town council, there's an assumption that by hiring this consultant, something is gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. So what, what might that be? My guess is it's the Public Utilities Commission that would be the, the group involved. So what I heard about this thing was that um, utilities have a certain amount of time to repair something once they're made aware of and the problem is assessed and that there is a desire not to do that assessment kind of until they have time to do it, whether that's accurate yeah, or not. Right, that's, right. That was the inclination. So I'm wondering what the intent is of hiring this consultant. Does it put it on the dance card? Does it push it ahead faster? And is there, in fact, an obligation that now is owned by the utilities to fix it in a timely manner? I suspect that's exactly what they're hoping to accomplish. Yes, and I'm embarrassed um, that um, I don't have that information at my fingertips. Yeah, I'm just wondering if it's possible to, to yeah, have an understanding of I have asked town council to just give a quick look because yeah, great. So we so it's as not a town subject don't have any regulatory authority. This is a subject for 
what you're saying is a future agenda item. Yeah. Sounds like it's got yeah, and, you know, some meat on the bones. You know, a question came into Caitlin today about the November town meeting, and as I understood the issue, it wasn't so much to add an article, which is a very big thing, as opposed to request some funding, which yeah. can have some time and doesn't need to be decided in the next four weeks or six weeks. Yeah. yeah. So we had a presentation, I think, back when we had the big uh, issue. Yes. Right. Where there was a, a start of this discussion that indicated mm -hmm. there were lots of other places. Um, and I think maybe in the last month we got a letter, probably from one of the people on the petition. So, yes, it's on the agenda for next time. Great. If town council is looking into it, that's wonderful. Is it on the next agenda? Or is it will it? be. Okay, got yeah, it. We'll have to put it somewhere. somewhere. Yeah, so I, I have the answer to Mark's question so far. It's an I petition. If you go to I petitions, um, yeah, I saw that. Too. You, you can look at it, and, and it says um, the audit will provide the town with the information it needs to work with National Grid to prioritize the repair of our largest and most harmful gas leaks in Reading within the time frames of the current legislation. I guess there's legislation that they have to do it within a certain time frame, and. Um, then they added some information uh, under reporting of leaks by utilities, new requirements that utilities must repair large volume gas leaks within strict time limits, um, et cetera. But that will all come out yeah, in the yeah. next meeting. But that's, that's Mark asked what, yeah, got it. what the thing is. Yep. Town Council's on it. So. Yep. Yeah. That's good. Uh, the next one is a question for the board. Um, you've discussed in the past, recently, thinking about a home rule petition to, okay, I guess I'll say, regain control over local roads. If that's something the board wants to pursue, that's and it's through the home rule process, um, that's something we'll have to get started soon. So I wanted to, I was going to bring up under my report on the 27th, but I thought maybe an agenda item, even if it's 10 minutes, would be helpful. Since Ray will be at the meeting, you can have the next a, meeting. Yes, um, you can. Uh, well, he'll, he'll personally, be there. I'm very interested he'll in regaining control of our own 11, streets. So, okay. to be honest with you, it's not as though they took control and took over the maintenance expense. <laughs> they took control in the 70s, and we have to do everything, and they get to tell us what to do. I'm sure that makes a, no I'm sure there's a background. Too. Yeah, I, I, I Reading don't think agreed for that, some reason. That's it. Whatever the reason was, um, but if that's something that the board is interested in pursuing, then we'll throw it on the agenda, start the discussion, and Ray can give you a time frame. Because as you know, you saw from tonight, Victor needs to be working on the home rule petition yeah. now, and that's one we all yeah. easily understand. Those take a long time. Yes. So, so if John said yes to that. I would say yes to that. Yeah, I, I'd like to look into it. Yeah. What would and be, how do you feel about that? She probably has to recuse herself. Uh, I think that that should. I don't. I don't think. I. I. I do need to exercise some caution when I'm yeah. playing. No, and we're not at a voting place. Yet. But with respect to a, an agenda item, that's uh, I got fine it. with me. Yes. Okay. Agree. Thank you. And you know, I realize you may need to step away from the uh, the discussion at that moment, but it sounds like, generally speaking, that um, that's a good topic okay. for an Thank agenda you. item. All I have. Okay. Anybody else have anything burning around the future agenda item that we haven't discussed? And if so, by all means, feel free to forward that to request to and Vanessa, um, and then it'll get processed in the in the normal way. We do have a very full dance card yeah. on the twenty seventh for yeah. sure. So, um, okay. Last thing is minutes. What do we got? Uh, what do we have in here? I sent some comments to uh, Caitlin yeah. at lunchtime during my lunch break, um, and and they're in this handout here. Yeah, they were yeah. forwarded to us. Just so people could see what you were. Yeah, yeah. Right. So Anne could also and see Anne, it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, and they're relative to the minutes that we also had in the packet. Right. Right. For, so for the last for the ninth July night. So this, the one is for the twenty fifth. Uh, June 25th and then um, there's two for the 25th and there's two for the 9th and I have a question about um, the 9th as well for the board um, 
Well, can we clear up the 25th? Yes. 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 Let's get that one out of the way and that will have accomplished something. Okay. <laughs> so, so you've got a couple of amendments, Andy. Mm -hmm. And so if you'd like to just state those for the 25th yep. and then we'll go from there. So, um, the, the, um, I, I asked to replace the statement, the Board of Health under liaison reports. The Board of Health had a discussion at their last meeting about the issue of violations he raised. And I um, changed, I, I, I rewatched the video and I said something to the effect of the Board, the Board of Health discussed revising the monthly health agent report, but did not come to a conclusion. I don't know if that's perfect either, but it's um, closer. And then the other was that I think there was just a word left out um, uh, for a, a statement that Bob said and made. Okay. And that's it. Any? I any do, Caitlin. I apologize for not having sent you anything advance. In advance, I do have one um, edit as well. But I don't know if we need to vote first on on Andy. Nope. What, what page is yours on? Okay. Uh, page 88. So mm -hmm. I, it's that under the eco-friendly initiative, yep. um, Ms. Land noted that the state runs a green community program that gives money to communities with every green initiative they take. It's not um, with every green initiative they take, but that prov I think it provides financial and technical assistance to communities for green initiatives, but it's not for every green initiative they undertake. So. Okay. So if I take out the word every, would that for green initiatives? Um, Maybe assist with? With. Um, assist with for, green initiatives? For, for green initiatives, maybe. Okay. That would work, I think. Assist. Okay. Anything else, Anne, for the, for the 25th? For the 25th, if that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Mark? Move that the board approve the meeting minutes of June 25th as amended. Um, Second. Okay. Any any discussion? Okay, we're going to have a roll call. Andy. Yes. Mark. Yes. Ann. Yeah. And Halsey. Yes. Okay. On to um, the meeting minutes of July 9th. So, Andy, you do have some. And before we get there, Andy, do you have any corrections or additions to the ninth? I I had some friendly amendment. What I hope would be a friendly amendment to Andy's amendments, okay. um, but I so I don't know first. Like, all right. Well, Andy. then, if they if they're relative to the same topic, since Andy's got these printed, let's hear those. Okay. Um, hang on one second. Do you have anything, Mark, that's separate from this? No. Okay. So, Andy, floor is yours. Thank you. Um, under um, the Section Ad Hoc Human Rights Commission Committee, um, and uh, I know this was a long, um, circuitous discussion, so I think Caitlin did, did certainly did her, her best, um, but I requested that uh, the statement, Mr. Friedman just wants to continue under the current format, which violates the charter, to something I think reflected more of what I what I stated. Um, Mr. Friedman stated that he is not a fan of opening up boards and committees to non-residents. However, in this case, because the board voted to appoint a Medco parent, it would be wrong to turn around and say that she can no longer be a full member of the ad hoc. So it sounds like you're proposing a, gent a gentler description that is essentially saying the same thing. Well, I, I mean, it's it's it's. Um, I, I mean, the 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 statement just wants. It almost sounds like I was being dismissive, and it was a little more nuanced than that. Okay. So I just watched the video and picked up phrases and words that I said and put them together to to, to reflect what what I said. And so, you know, of course, this is based on the minutes of that discussion, yes. not relative to a statement you made at the beginning of this meeting. Well, um, which is very the, different. The, the, yeah, the and we can't I, revise the history. No, no, no. I'm not asking you to revise. This is actually what I said in that meeting. Okay. 
Okay. Um, and and I think my statement tonight was um, acknowledging that that was Got it. it was a tough situation, but that was not the right call on my part. Um, and then um, the second one was so so this this one was interesting. This was actually uh, John. You made a statement, and then I asked if I could respond to that statement. So I asked for please move the following. Mr. Friedman, Mr. Friedman feels this is similar to a situation with the Board of Health two years ago and noted that town council said it was okay to continue asking why it is now not okay. Um, so I asked first to move that to the under the paragraph where you, you stated Mr. Halls agrees with with, um, with Ms. Landry's right, right, but they're not connected. They're they're non sequitur. Well, in the meeting, actually, um, what I respond, I I included my response to what you said, and it says it says follows. Um, Mr. Friedman saw an inconsistency with a similar situation two years ago in September. Uh, oops, in September, cross out the second in 2017. People noted that the board appointed Board of Health members in a way that was not consistent with the charter. At the time, the select board decided to stick with the appointments. Uh, town council stated that we'd have to have a hearing to remove them. Why that answer then for a charter challenge? And yet now we have a change of tune. That's sort of literally what I I, I just pulled that right out of the video. Uh, well, it seems. I'm not like trying to re can rewrite. I, can I ask a question first. Yeah. When you want to move it, um, you want to move it because you think it's clearer that you're responding to what John said. But Vanessa did the same thing right after you spoke. She, she did. Responded she did. To what John so actually, that's fine then. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that kind so of so forget forget that recommendation. And Anna had some suggestions. Yeah. Oh, my, my what I hope is a friendly amendment is that that um, the the language that you're proposing, Andy, that um, like at the beginning of each sentence, to just say something like Mr. Friedman said, because otherwise it might sound a little bit at that meeting like it says town council stated. Oh yeah. Present at our last meeting, but it, it, you missed the meeting follow that yeah it makes you feel like that that's very true John and, and so obviously it was clear in our in the meeting uh, this yes. so what would your friendly amendment be in oh just that like the beginning of each sentence say something along the line or it just be clear like mr. Friedman said or, okay. or mr. Friedman noted something like that at the beginning of each sentence okay so, rather than a, 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 one, a sentence starting with town council stated which makes it sound like Oh, I Town see. Town council was at the meeting and yes, stated. Yes. So how how about um, uh, Mr. Friedman uh, noted noted that um, noted in 2017 that makes it clear. Right. Yep. Mr. Mm -hmm. Friedman noted in 2017 that Town Council stated, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think that clarifies. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Well, I, you know, the only thing I, I, well, I just I didn't review the tape, mm -hmm. but I think that we want to be careful that we're not revising the history of what actually happened. I mean, and I don't know that we are or aren't, but it seems like we are. I mean, I like the idea of what Anna suggested to clarify that the town council was not here. You know kind of dueling on the topic yes um, because he wasn't um, yeah and had he been I'm sure he would have been able to because I, well I don't think that's yeah, that's I think not we just part of the minutes that. we're just okay. talking about the minutes all right um, and and um, I think it's important that the minutes reflect some of the to, to me um, some of these subtleties and I, I took time to use phrases and sentences that I actually spoke. 
So, but I, and I agree that you're, um, so I'm not changing history here at all. Go, go, I mean, you, if you want to wait and go back and watch the tape to see what I said, uh, that's No, I, I don't need to do that. But, uh, I, but I'm, I just I'm, don't, I just want to be sure I'd that be, we're I'm, not attacking town council in this change. No, no, I'm, I'm just, that's what I said, and, and I'm not attacking them. I'm just saying, that why, why the change of tune now? Because so that was, this is what that's sort of what led to my uh, confusion about um, uh, 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 and, and about my confusion about having not abiding by the charter in this case. So um, I felt that was relevant. It's what I said, um, and that's that's all I'm trying. Yeah, to and that that'll, that'll be up for the next debate. But I, I get what we're just trying to solve the minutes here. Yeah, that's all. Okay, and it's what you said and. We've clarified that town council was not engaged in this, yeah. um, nor was there anything going back and forth. Um, that seems like it makes sense. Uh, I thought Ann's suggestion was an excellent one. Um, anybody else see anything here? Bob, does that seem to be... Well, if I had heard all that that night, I'm not saying you didn't say it, but I didn't hear it, I would have understood your point more than I did that night. Yeah. Um, Caitlin and I discussed the next day, and we were trying to figure out what was Andy referring to that was two years ago. We didn't know. Mm -hmm. yeah, it wasn't dated. It was yeah. two years ago. Right. I think that this became very clear the next day in your emails when we were mm -hmm. figuring it mm -hmm. out. Right. But I think that night, I don't think the specific date was said, like the September. I, I think it was more of a broad statement of um, yeah. two years uh, ago. something that happened in the past with the Board of Health. Right, and yeah. town council um, gave an opinion one way that doesn't seem to be the same now. Yeah. I think it was a very broad statement along those lines. And then going forward, I think you figured out that this was exactly what you meant. And yeah. I'm not quite sure it was that clear that night. Yeah. So, so I, I thought, obviously, I thought it was very clear. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I did say all of these things um, in, in the meeting. Now, the September, the reference to September 2017, I might have said earlier in the meeting. Uh, I, and we, so we can say, Mr. We can put that where, where it belongs. But that sort of seemed complicated. Um, but we, we can, if you'd like, I, I'd be happy to rewatch, you know, have us go through the video. Yeah, um, there's just one other thing that I don't remember hearing mm -hmm. now, and I've obviously been doing, typing up a lot yep. of minutes, so yep. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. But um, the, the hearing to remove the, the town council stated that we needed to have a hearing to remove them. Mm -hmm. um, I know this was all going on during the time that we did have a hearing to remove other members. I'm not sure if that's getting mixed in with a different conversation because I don't remember town council saying we had to remove. No, we're just going over the minutes of what I said. Right, I don't um, remember that ever being stated. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember that, that you saying um, that that night. I can send you the, okay. the, the time stamp. Because this is very clear as opposed to, again, maybe I wasn't listening carefully, yeah, but I just yeah. don't remember that detail. Is it fair to say that, yeah. you know, we're making progress on this? You want to get it right, I understand yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we all have, believe me, I have a committee meeting going on in my head most mm -hmm. of the time. <laughs> and why you can't all understand what's going on in there is yes, beyond yes, me, but yes. um, I think we all kind of have that. Yeah, um, and I and I understand that you want to that you want to be properly quoted. Yeah, I'm not sure we're going to get there tonight. Although mm -hmm. we've made some progress. Why yeah. don't we hold off on these ones, and I'll just go back and and revise it. Are you okay with that? that, that yeah, back, absolutely. Put them okay. in. Um, yeah, good. yeah. I'll appropriate. Obviously, have what you said, and then I'll go yeah. back and make sure I'm not wrong. And then right. And are you all right with that? And I'll put them again in next week's packet for to talk or for the twenty seventh. Yeah, that sounds great. Do those again. That sounds great. You you good with that, Ann? I am. Yes, good. that's that's totally right. fine. Let's agree that um, then that we will not be acting on the minutes of seven nine. Yeah. Tonight we'll do, we'll we'll roll that up into the next meeting. Okay. okay. Um, so I had the, the other question I had for seven nine and was that. The, at the very, very end, um, um, it was, no, actually it was, I apologize, it was at the beginning when we had the hearing 
Um, it's on page 92, the top of page 92, um, that states, I'm sorry? The liquor hearing? Yeah, the liquor hearing, okay. top of page 92. Um, there's a pair, there's a one sentence paragraph that Mr. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Oh, to Julia? Mr. Mr. Julia? To Julia? Is yeah, I think on here? page 92 it's spelled differently, maybe. Okay. It's just Julia. Oh, did I forget the D-I? Possibly, yeah. Okay. okay. So, that's a correction. Okay. <laughs> that's a good, um, argued yeah. that Mr. Patel did not intentionally sell to a minor and that they cannot find him in violation because he was in, it was not his intent. And then it followed with the board had mixed opinions on how to proceed and asked him, asked about finding him in violation of their policies. I didn't so much get the sense that we had mixed opinions on how to proceed. I think we, we wanted a number of, th you know, we asked for a number of things, one of which was, John, I think you, or you asked, so he contended that his client violate um, the the law that was that was the book that was thrown at him and um, you and he cited some case law and you asked for us to see that case law to, to, to see he was he was citing case law right and um, I said okay do you have it and he said no he was just he had recollection of it and I said I think we got to see it right right um, so and I and I thought I think that's noted in there I feel um, like um, I, I guess what I meant by that is when he threw in the whole um, the intentional thing yeah um, that's where everyone kind of got thrown off because um, we thought we were just trying to find him in violation and he said you're supposed to find him in violation of intentionally selling right and then I felt like that kind of threw everyone off um, yeah. Mm. Oh, I, I, That's why I, yeah. maybe it, I should write that a little better. Yeah. yeah, I think actually I made a comment at that point just to make sure that what the hearing was about right. relates That's to... That's what I was trying to get to. Yeah, all yeah. the activities that took place because it wasn't clear to me. So. And, it, and I think also there were... We weren't looking at policy. We hadn't included right. Right. policies that... We, we felt he was in clear violation of. Right. Therefore, we continued the hearing yes. yeah. to be able to encompass. That's what I guess I meant by the board had mixed opinions so, on how to proceed. Yeah, actually, you know, in talking about this now, I think, you know, mixed opinions doesn't mean disagreeing. No, no. Right. right. It just means we had very, we had very yeah, responsive. We it yeah, wasn't yeah, an yeah, argument. Yeah. That's fine. It that's wasn't fine. a disagree. It wasn't even no. a disagree no. opinions. Yeah. It was different opinions about how do we get from A to B? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the conclusion we came to was continue the hearing. Yeah. What do we want to see? That's right. And, and, yeah. and I think that a lot of things are going on now. Yeah. Um, around that towards the 27th. Yes. Yes. You'll yes. have the continued hearing plus a new hearing about having to your policies. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. So we'll finish this up on the 27th. Yes. Okay. Um, any more business before the board? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Um, roll call. Ann. Yes. <laughs> Mark. Yes. Andy. Andy, yes. Halsey, yes. 10 o'clock. We're all done. Sign.